Okay. Uh, are you there, Santos? Can you hear me? Yep. yep. All right. Great. That's uh, it was something simple, but I was very confused by it. I apologize. As you can tell, I'm very new to the uh, Skype. So sorry once again. Uh, I'm glad you made it, and I'm glad to uh, have you as tonight's guest. And uh, appreciate your time being here on Toxic Reality Radio. My pleasure. Okay. Uh, Santos, I know a lot of people out there have heard of you, and a lot of our audience that are in chat have heard of you before. But for those who haven't, and there always is some, can you go back and just, um, I mean, back to, let's go, let's go back to birth when you arrived on the planet. How's that? Oh, boy. In your, yeah, your biography. <laughs> a little bit of mm-hmm. myself. Well, that was, um, in the late afternoon of the 24th of March, 63. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so I'm, um, I'm very excited to be in my 49th well, I'm in my 50th year of life, but I am officially 49 years old, which is 7 times 7, which is the perfect astrological age for a man. Um, 7 times 6 is the perfect age for a woman. That's 42 years of age. So uh, I have seven years ahead of me of peak... Um, oh, they say it's, it's peak... Um, mm, energy in terms of mind and transformation and transmutation and the best years of a man's life. So that's exciting. Uh, but um, that I, I didn't know. Up, I never knew that. Yeah, yeah, seven times seven. That's the, the great age, 49 for a man to be, from 49 to 56. That's when uh, men produce their best uh, writing, their best work in history. When you look at careers of famous men, yeah. Um, so, for me, I grew up in the country in Myrtleford. I was born in Myrtleford, northeast Victoria, at the, at the um, in the Buffalo Valley, really, um, King Valley. Is where, that Australia? Uh, yeah, yeah, Victoria, in the Victorian Alps. Um, and uh, I grew up there as a country boy, um, and I really appreciate that because... I had a real good connect with the dirt, always running around barefoot, um, <laughs> eating all kinds of fruits and vegetables that my father planted on the orchard. He had a tobacco farm and all sorts of plants and trees. So it was really good health for health um, reasons uh, to grow up as a country boy. Um, and the reasons for which you know, I now understand, because when you when you connect with the dirt, especially with your bare feet, mm-hmm. you are discharging all the toxins, and you are really recharging your body with um, the needed required electricity. And of course, uh, sunshine is is another good component of that electrical intake. And um, so I had plenty of that. That was good. Um, but uh, I grew up. My parents uh, brought, raised me as a Jehovah's Witness. We were a Jehovah's Witness family, contrary to the rest of the family. Um, all my family came from southern Italy, and uh, Myrtleford has uh, you know, a whole bunch of Italian folk all around there that, from the tobacco days. And uh, they were all Catholic, you see, mm-hmm. my family, except for my mother's brother and his family who were still witnesses, and uh, my mother's family, you see. Uh, so so I grew up with that. Then at the age of 14, I rebelled against the church, and I just did the um, the uh, usual teenage things, mm-hmm. you know, smoked cannabis, chased girls, listened to um, all the good rock and roll music, Led Zeppelin, The Stones, Pink Floyd, and all those guys. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, and just grew up. My main uh, staple was Monty Python and Led Zeppelin. Basically, that's that's <laughs> I grew up on that. <laughs> well, I did too. I did too. We're the, we're, the, we're nearly the same age. I'm a couple of years younger, but I used to pretend to be Led Zeppelin when I got home from school and put the headphones on, grab the guitar, and put on the uh, uh, graffiti album. Yeah. Ah, uh, physical graffiti <laughs> is yeah. the number one album of 
all time in the universe, yeah. full stop. And it is the greatest rock and roll album, of course, if it has, if it is designated the greatest album of all time, well, it has to be the greatest rock and roll album too, doesn't it? Oh yeah, absolutely. I agree. You, you're, you're a musician and I didn't even know this until I started, you know, delving into some of your work and I came across, you know, your guitar playing and I was like, wow, you know, and, um, and yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll talk later about how people can get to your site and how to discover all that. And uh, yeah, that's that's amazing. You're very yeah, I too, like yourself, wanted to be Jimmy Page. <laughs> <laughs> it was tough, wasn't it? Oh, <laughs> you know. wow. just that it's just that he was transcendental in, in his in his approach. Very earthy. He's a Capricorn. You know, when you look at the astrology of bands, you 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 work out. Immediately, immediately, where the so-called chemistry lies, it's in the stars. Yeah. Now Led Zeppelin's stars are absolutely perfect for a four-piece rock and roll band, and I can get into that later on. And I'll explain that because it, it, mm-hmm. astronomically and astrologically, they are the perfect, perfect rock and roll outfit. And I'll get into that if we get some time. But um, sounds great. Yeah. Yeah, sounds- that was good. And then um. After uh, my consuming my teenage years on all the good stuff, smoking cannabis and uh, you know, and all of that free stuff and expanding the consciousness, I decided that I was going to be spiritual again. <laughs> <laughs> so I, um, I just naturally gravitated to the Jehovah's Witnesses, thinking that. They must have the truth since they used to go around telling everybody that they were the true religion. You know, yeah, it must be, must be the truth. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. At uh, 19 years of age, uh, you know, I was um, gullible enough to swallow that stuff. But, but you know, look, I have no regrets. I stuck it out for 22 years. I was a regular pioneer and a ministerial servant, and I served where the need was great. I served in Italian speaking. Congregations, Portuguese, Spanish, French. Mm-hmm. I went around because of my language skills. I went around serving. You see, right? <laughs> you were a true yeah. believer. <laughs> Sorry, you were you were what they say uh, the true believer. Oh uh, yeah, I used to get people in my own my own, my own mother told me to stop pioneering and, and concentrate on you know myself, and she was a witness. My mm-hmm. sister w- w- would tell me, "Hey, look, you know if." If you can't have a spiritual conversation with you, you you can't even get through to you. What's the matter with you, man? You're too spiritual, you know? Mm, yeah. <laughs> and they were all witnesses. Everybody was telling me that I was unbalanced. I was too eager and zealous and everything like that. But but um, I don't regret not one moment of all that. What I regret is the fact that the, the, uh, the church exists. I regret that churches actually exist and are obviously just franchises of the divided kingdom of Christendom, which is Christendom or Christianity, whatever you want to call it. Mm -hmm. Um, 30,000 registered. Look, what hurts me is the fact that these organizations still exist when it is known and the scriptures themselves tell you that the Christ is within. And the historical Christ, whether there was, you know, a man with... You know, with great teachings and, and an ascended master in the Middle East and everything like whether there was or not, it's irrelevant because because what he taught or what he would have taught would be the same as what any ascended master would teach, and that is the science of as above, so below. So is the yeah. yeah, the Bible is full of it. The um, the all of the ancient. Uh, myth- mythologies, all of them, all of them. They're all dealing with the science of as above, so below. And the characters are always the same characters. They are either microcosmic characters or macrocosmic characters. And there's also a third category. There's the mesocosm. So we have a, in the science of as above, so below, there's the macrocosm, the big world, and the microcosm, the small world, which is the body. Mm -hmm. And you can also add the mesocosm, which is the middle kingdom, the middle world, and that uh, pertains to things that happen on the secular 
decline on this planet. Mm-hmm. But um, if we deal strictly with macro and micro, uh, we find that the ancients taught us, and so does the Bible teach, that there are 12 signs in the circle, in the sphere above, the dome of the of the stars, there are 12 signs that, that occupy 30 degrees each that lie behind the path that the sun takes mm-hmm. in the sky, and that's called the ecliptic. That's the extension of the Earth's equator. See, as the Earth, if you grab that line of the equator of the Earth and you extend it out to reach the heavens, That is basically where the sun travels. And behind that ecliptic, the extension of the equator, are 12 signs. And the signs always begin with Aries. And and that, in relation to your body, is the head, the very top of the head, the dome, the cranium. And Mm. the last sign that the sun travels through is Pisces. So from Aries to Pisces, there are 12 signs at 360 degrees and it covers your whole body. So your head contains Aries, then Taurus. Then the two arms are the two twins, Gemini. And then Cancer is the chest, Leo is the heart, and Virgo is the belly, Libra is the kidneys, Scorpio is the generative area, Sagittarius the upper thighs, Capricorn the knees, Aquarius the shins, and the two fish are Pisces. Now, when you have a look at Leonardo da Vinci's Last Supper properly, from left to right, mm-hmm. you will notice the um, you will notice the the clear and patent hints that Leonardo da Vinci gives to indicate that. He's talking about Jesus in the middle of the table of the Last Supper. That's the sun. And his 12 disciples are the 12 signs of the zodiac. And you can see that clearly. Uh, When you start from the left and you take the left uh, position to be the head, Aries, the head, and you will notice that that the disciple on the extreme left is standing at the end of the table. All the rest are standing behind the table. That's because Aries is the head of the table. Now, all why, the other stuff, why did they put it in? I'm sorry, for interrupting, but why do, why do you think, or do you know they put it into the paintings? Why did he, uh, why was there a reason, you think? I mean, that... Because, because Leonardo knows the true occult science of the scriptures and the Bible, and, and he knows that there is only one true theological teaching and all the churches are teaching derivatives um, of that. You see, they're all copying this science of as above, so below, and teaching it uh, to you know in varying degrees of truth. Right. Um, but I can guarantee you that Christianity is teaching um, the bottom most level of truth, the truth of all of this. They are teaching the bottom, the very bottom rung, because they are the lowest of the uh, the Masonic free, free Masonic system of castes. You see, there are four castes, just like the Indian. The Indians have the Brahmins at the top and the Untouchables at the bottom. Mm-hmm. Well, in the West, our system also has four castes. Christianity is at the bottom. Um, Israel, the people of Israel, which are not a race, Mm -hmm. occupy the second caste. Then the Jews are the third caste and the Hebrews are at the top. And above that, there is a very, very special caste of um, teleos. And teleos means perfected master. Now, they won't tell you this. You don't learn this in church. You don't learn this anywhere. You have to understand you know, the deeper, deeper secrets of occult science to know that this is the system in the West. So so the Christians will always be as the song that the Jews sing, uh, onward Christian soldiers, off you go to war, we will make the uniforms as we've done before. 
the attitude of the higher castes that have lost their way also is expressed by Henry Kissinger when he said that um, soldiers are stupid animals uh, and they are cannon fodder. They make good cannon fodder. Well, Christians have been used as cannon fodder for 2,000 years. And, um, you know, I, I won't find too many, too many people even <laughs> that haven't read their history that will disagree with that. I mean, the most blood-shedding entity in the universe, bar none, is Christianity. Mm. So called Christianity. <laughs> well, the symbolo symbology of the... I mean, they have the, the little fish symbol. And yep. um, you know, what's that all about? I mean, it has to relate to something, I guess. Well, it does. It relates to the sign of Pisces because the vernal equinox has been in the sign of Pisces for 2,000 years. You see... The the true story about Jesus, Jesus is a compromise of two words, Jupiter and Zeus. Jupiter and Zeus. In Roman, in the Roman language, Jupiter is that that planet that rules Pisces, and his name in, in Greece is Zeus. So when you hmm. merge the two the two words you get Jesus, Jupiter Zeus. You see, and he turns up exactly on cue when Pisces began 2,000 years ago, and he has been the beneficent ruler of that sign. And that's why he says you must love your enemies, because Jupiter is the loving, the most loving of all the planets, you see. Whereas the one before Jupiter was Mars in the age of Aries. And that was in the Roman, Grecian, Medo-Persian days over 2,000 years ago. So that would be the BC period, you know, the before Christ or before mm -hmm. the Common Era. The Common Era is the so-called Christian or Jesus period because Jupiter Zeus is the ruler of that. Now, Mars, on the other hand, He's the God of war, and that's why the Bible in the Old Testament is always saying, I am Jehovah, I am the God of war. Mm. I am the God of armies, he says. And I am a warlike God. Because, well, here's, here's an interesting fact. The motto for Aries is, I am. So when Moses, or Mars's, mm -hmm talks to the burning bush and he says, Oh God, who shall I say that has sent me when I go down to Pharaoh? And God says to Moses in the burning bush, I am. Well, right. if that's not the motto for Aries. <laughs> wow. Yep. And the motto for uh, Pisces is I believe. You know, those Christians that say, Oh, brother, you need to believe, brother, to be saved. If you don't believe in Jesus, mm -hmm. you won't be saved. And then the other fish says, I doubt. So it's the church of doubt and belief. And all of that is how we got to where we're at now. Yeah, which is the threshold of Aquarius. And Aquarius's motto is, guess what? I know. And this is why we are knowing who we are. We are remembering that we are divine droplets of deific life. We are children of God. We are sons and children of the Son. And the Son has always been considered to be God because he is the Father Fountain, the portal of spiritual life on this solar system. And um, Aquarius is interesting because uh, the ruler of Aquarius is um, Saturn, mm -hmm. and that's the daddy of Jesus, you see, Jesus. And that's why Jesus says, when you see the sign of the Son of Man in the heavens, that would be Aquarius, the Son of Man, the only man in the zodiac belt, know, therefore, that the kingdom of God has drawn near. So what what that prophecy is saying, that when you see the sign of the Son of Man in the heavens, Aquarius, you see, when mm -hmm. you go out on March the 21st at 6 a.m. in the morning, mm -hmm. because that's exactly the time that the sun rises on March the 21st, 
Also, on the other equinox, September the 21st, it's the only two days where the sun rises exactly at 6 a.m. and sets at 6 a.m. Um, because those two are the two days of equilibrium when the sun is in the middle. And when you go out there and you look to the east, you'll notice that the head of Aquarius is just popping up behind the sun. And Pisces is now 30 degrees above the horizon. So Pisces has slipped 30 degrees out now, and the sun now will be in Aquarius for another 2,000 years. When that happens, when you see the sign of the Son of Man in heavens, you know that the kingdom of heavens is drawn near. The kingdom of heavens, you see, the kingdom of hell and the kingdom of earth has to do with your spinal cord because heaven and hell, the distance between the two, is the distance between your cranium and your generative area. Your generative area is known as Sodom and Gomorrah, Egypt, Babylon, Canaan, the land of the Philistines, the land of the animals, the animal nature, because down there is your bowels and your, mm -hmm. and your uh, digestion and and your sexual activity, and your lust, and your lust for power, and greed comes from those bottom chakras. Those bottom nerve, nerve ganglions that are attached to the spinal cord, they are very, very strong, and they have to do with the sexual urge. It's almost irresistible. And the urge to have power over other people and dominion and the urge to survive, to eat, and not to die. These come from the bottom chakras. Now, the heart chakra is the middle chakra, and it is the middle kingdom whereby we must ascend our energy, and I'll, I'll get into that in a minute, but once we pass the heart chakra and we go above, we, we send our energy up the spine above those that chakra, to the throat chakra and the pineal gland and the pituitary gland upstairs in heaven, we have arrived at the place called heaven. And this is the kingdom of heaven that will rule for a thousand years in the age of Aquarius. What it means is that we will be ruling our own kingdoms as kings and priests for a thousand years because we will know who we are. We will know that we are not servants of a corporate fictional Christian religion, be it the Jehovah's Witnesses, the Baptists, the Mormons, the Pentecostals. Mm -hmm. they, they are all there um, basically uh, existing as corporations because they haven't got an idea what, Christian, what Christianity is all about. They, don't, they have no idea yeah. that the Christ is within because they are stuck in their bottom chakras, you see. Corporations. That it's it's a the sound of that word just chills me. <laughs> I mean, it's it, it it all makes sense. But why do people? I mean, what's in the Bible, Santos? I mean, what, what people are always going to refer to that when you try to tell them things and try to you know, is, is there good in it? Is there is it just mis, misunderstanding? Oh, it's all good. It's all good. But um, as Hebrews chapter 4 verse 12 says, the Bible is a double-edged sword. It's a double-edged sword. Now, the ancient priesthoods, they were no dum-dums. Mm -hmm. They were very, very wise men. We know that. We still use all of their wisdom. We still have a 24-hour clock, which they gave us. We still have 360 degrees in the circle, which they gave us. We still have minutes and seconds. We still have the same days of the week, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, named after the seven orbs that are visible in the sky. We still use their wisdom. We're quite happy to say that, oh, they must have been cavemen and all of this rubbish. And, and um, you know, we're, we're, we're going to the moon now and we've got quartz, atomic clocks and we're so smart mm -hmm. no no they were much much more conscious and wiser in days gone by now now they were they were very very wise in the way that they wrote their gospels you see they 
wrote them in allegories. And the characters in those works are not real, literal, physical, historical characters. Mm -hmm. I mean, for goodness sakes, Jonah getting swallowed by by a whale for three days and surviving it. Um, you know, you're referring to the, the the buffoons. I've heard you mention about. <laughs> you we call them idiots, but buffoons and idiots are about the same. I guess. <laughs> yeah, look, it, it's like. It's like Santa Claus, you know, I mean, eventually you get to learn that he's not a historical person and there's no North Pole where you can go and visit mm -hmm. Santa Claus and ask him for presents. All of those characters have to do, in the microcosm, they have to do with the, the physiology. The brain usually is the heavenly parts, the cerebrum, the cerebellum, the optic thalamus, the amygdala, um, you've got the, pine, the beautiful glands, the pineal and pituitary. You have all of these marvellous, marvellous systems. We have 12 systems in our bodies, mm -hmm. okay? So we've got the nervous system, the respiratory system, the skeletal, the circulation, etc., etc. Now, each sign of the zodiac is connected with those systems. For instance, well, as I said before, Aries is the first sign of, of the zodiac. Well, in embryology, Aries, um, in embryology, the first thing to be developed, the first system out of the 12, is the cerebrospinal system. And that belongs to Aries. Aries is the cerebrum. Aries is the top of the head. The cerebrum, otherwise known in the Bible as cherubim, are the two covering angels. You see, you notice that the when you look at the cerebrum carefully, you'll notice that it has all these feathery convolutions. It looks like mm -hmm. an angel with two wings, and they, the wings are hollowed out, and they spread, and they cover the rest of the brain. And inside the cerebrum, then there's the midbrain, and there's the cerebellum underneath the midbrain. And so the cerebrum is the big brain and the cerebellum is called the small brain, you see? Mm -hmm. Now, the cerebellum is shaped like a heart and the two spheres, hemispheres of the cerebrum are covering over that and, and they're protecting it and they're sort of keeping it hidden, you see? This is why Moses was told to build the Ark of the Covenant, which is the optic thalamus, and he was supposed to put two cherubim above, covering over. They are the covering angels, you see. Mm. And, and they are at the top of the head. That's why you see, when you see Mercury's caduceus, you see a staff with two intertwined serpents and two wings of angels at the top. They are the two cerebrum, you see. Right. Now, cerebrum comes from two words. Seri, meaning wax, or in Latin we say cere, and we get cereals from that word, cereali, cereals. We also get, um, from Ceres, we get the goddess Ceres, you see? Mm -hmm. She's the goddess of cereals. And brim means neutral. So the, nu the neutral wax. And basically... That is the part of the human organism that produces the oil that builds the rest of the body. You see, the cerebrum is busy creating the fluid which flows down the spinal cord into the rest of the body through what's known, the tree of, known as the tree of life, which is the vagus nerve. The vagus nerve begins at the top the very, very top of the spinal cord at the medulla oblongata, just where the pineal gland and the pituitary gland are connected to the optic thalamus. And in fact, one of those nerves is called the pingala, comes from the pineal gland. And the, the ida, the second nerve, is the, um, comes from the pituitary body. And as the oil is secreted from the cerebrum, 
it gets differentiated at those two glands in the third ventricle and it, they get that neutral wax mm-hmm. is differentiated into an electrical and a magnetic um, fluid and it's then channeled down those two nerves to the sacrum, the second bottom most chakra where your genitals, where your testes are or where your ovaries. You so in a sense, we're like, we're, our, our bodies are sort of electric, I guess. I mean, Every, the universe is electric, right? Everything, every effect is electrical, electromagnetic, everything, everything. There's not a thing that is not produced by electricity. That's why Jesus was called Emmanuel, electricity, and his girlfriend is Magdalene, Magnet. magnetism, you see. Emmanuel and Magdalene. It's dealing with electricity and magnetism. They are characters. So you always have to look for these things, you see. Um, And so those two nerves, they are the two thieves that are crucified on, on, um, on each side of the Christ when he gets crucified, you see. Because when the oil returns and flows upward and ascends up the spine back to the optic thalamus and crosses over the vagus nerve, that's the crucifixion of the Christ oil. And the mother of Jesus, which is the pituitary gland, Mary, the virgin, and the father, the pineal gland, Joseph, the father of the God-man, they produced, you see, when the fluid gets differentiated at those organs, they are the ones who are responsible for making the fluid. They are the parents, the divine parents of the seed that is born in the solar plexus. You see, because every month, when the, when the moon is transiting your sun sign, there is a seed born in your solar plexus, just mm-hmm. above the sacred plexus. And that's the Christ. The sacred, the solar plexus is also called Bethlehem, the house of bread. Bethlehem means the house of bread because the bread of life is the Christ. Mm-hmm. And... Um, very important to understand this science. Astrology is so important, it's so crucial. Without it, you cannot be, literally, you cannot be saved in no. this sense because salvation comes from that salt or, or in other words, the Christ or the bread or the oil or the fish or the seed or whatever else you want to call it, the manna from heaven, um, the wax from the cerebrum. There's many names for this precious, precious gold of a fear. In the Bible, it says that the four rivers flowed out of the out of the Garden of Eden. The Garden of Eden is the cerebrum, and the river that flows out of there are the four rivers: the um, the blood, the wax, um, the water in the body, etc. Mm-hmm. These these are the four fluids, the four types of fluid that come that are in the body. You see, and Eden is the skull, and um, and she she and and the tree of life is the vagus nerve, and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil are the two other nerves, the pingala and the ida, that also travel down down towards hell or the bottom of the body. You see, that's why Mercury's staff is called a caduceus. Caduceus means to fall because the beautiful fluids fall from the cherubim or the cerebrum and they cadere. You see, cadere in Latin means to fall and that's where caduceus comes from. So it falls falls down, but what do we do with it? Mm -hmm. Are we good Christians and are we tithing? Are we returning one-tenth back to the Lord? Because that's what it means to tithe. It means to give back to the Lord what the Lord has given us. Now, the Lord gives us the fluid, the the differentiated fluid, and the Lord plants the seed in our solar plexus every month. But what are we doing with it? Are we squandering our... Are we looting our bank account by living riotously like the prodigal son who went down from his father's kingdom and he said, Father, man, you've got this great kingdom upstairs here, but I'm just going to go down and sleep with the prostitutes and drink with the 
bibers of wine, and I'm going to live riotously. <laughs> and of course, you see, the prodigal son came to his senses and he returned back to his father in the heavens, you see. Um, well, what that means, it's referring to the process by which we, if we save that seed and we save the Christ, and the scriptures are, 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 are full of expressions where where we where it teaches that we need to um, you know nurture the little Christ seeds within. We get twelve of these seeds every year. Right, and the church has a different version of that. You know, yeah. the, the church is, uh, and, and, it's, and it's knowledge. I mean, this very important knowledge um, was hidden. I mean, I, I, that's the part I don't understand is why. Why would they intentionally hide that knowledge, being as grand as it is? You know? um, two reasons. One is obviously that uh, we we lost our understanding of this beautiful science when you for instance when you go to Egypt and you see all those hieroglyphs which is another word for holy writings mm -hmm. hiero means holy and glyph is just a writing uh, you see them they they took great pains to engrave what we now think are graven images on their Doriite and granite megalithic structures and temples, they took great pains to leave this science there for us because they knew that the solar system suffers great cataclysmic loss of consciousness mm -hmm. in, 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 its, in its cyclical nature. And they knew that, that they would on this planet, we would come to a time when recognition of all of those hieroglyphs would be almost zero, except for a, a small elite group of conscious human beings that would keep the science alive. And, and those ones were persecuted. They were the ones that, you know, when Constantine and Theodosius in the late 4th century started going down to Egypt and burning the library down at Alexandria... Um, you know, destroying the temples there. They killed Hypatia. They made a statement, basically, mm -hmm. the so-called Christians. They came on with a bang. You know, Julian, in in the year, just 20 years before Hypatia was killed, Julian, the great emperor, emperor that they call the apostate, he he said, he said, never, never did did Jesus or Paul ever imagine that the Christians would have so much power that they would go around killing and murdering and slitting throats and destroying and raising temples like the Jews. And, mm -hmm. and he said, you vent your anger just like the Jews and you raise temples to the ground and you destroy us, you kill us, you are slit throats, you are animals. And, and where do you get your authority to go around killing and conquering and pillaging? Jesus and Paul didn't leave any of those instructions. No. They, told, they told you to love your brothers. And they told you to live the good life the life of virtue. But you see, you know, when when the Catholic Church sent Columbus over across the Atlantic to take those lands off the indigenous people, uh, and in 1493 when he signed the um, the Treaty of Tordesillas, that sealed, basically that gave the Vatican rights to use that land. They stole it off the indigenous people, threw them into, into reservations, and are still doing business in the name of Jesus mm. on that land. And how do I know that? Well, I guarantee you one thing, Michael. There is mm. not one square centimetre of land on that beautiful continent known as America that is not, um, is not under a parish of the Catholic Church. Now, you've got to ask yourself the question. Mm -hmm. And, and I ask myself the question every time I'm driving through the suburbs of Melbourne and I, I realise that I'm driving through municipalities that are otherwise known as parishes. And I wonder to myself, how did the Catholic Church manage to establish parishes everywhere where Westerners have stolen land mm -hmm. of Indigenous people? 
what a parish is doing here in Melbourne. Well, it's just what I say, what I've always said in my videos and proven, that the churches are the true rulers of these lands that have been stolen. And they call the shots. There's not a politician who would be brave enough. You know, when JFK was was audacious enough to speak out against the secret societies just 10 days before he was assassinated in Congress, I think it was 10 days, mm -hmm. but he made that famous speech against secret societies. He was targeting the Catholic Church. They are the secret, 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 absolute number one secret entity on the planet. Just look at how many books they've stolen off other cultures and hidden them in the vaults of the Vatican and kept them secret mm -hmm. because they've got something to hide. And the fact is they are hiding the fact that they are ruling the world. And the Pope calls the shots every where George Bush, Barack Obama, these are just puppets of the Vatican, you know. Yeah, he's and like the king say, of the earth. You know, the Pope is like the king of the planet, you know. Yep, yep. He's made the highest claim. He has claimed to be the Pontifex Maximus. Therefore, he is the one that will pay the most when judgment comes. And the universe is a very kind, loving mother. She will, she will administer the beautiful justice that this organization deserves. Everything in its time and place. Everything. It's so sweet. It's so sweet. But it's, it's so beautiful to contemplate the next few days ahead of us, the, the next few weeks and months. We are only weeks and months away from the revealing of all the darkest secrets that hum humanity on this planet has ever known and the revealing and unfolding of the new kingdom of heavens, the new order of the ages, you see, not the new world order that mm -hmm. the uh, Nazis want to implement on this planet, but the order of the ages. The age of Aquarius and the kingdom of heaven, the photon belt, the light of Zion, the dragon's breath. Uh, it's, it's the time that we've all been waiting for. The, um, you know, Shambhala, Mount Meru, um, Utopia. It's, it's right here now. It's, it's with us. It's, it is in well. our midst. Hmm. And, and what what you, do you think that's going to be like for everyone who dwells the earth now? I mean, what can we what can we look to? Well, if you were to sit quietly in meditation for three or four hours, and uh, you were asked one question, um, or you were told to to imagine mm -hmm. the most beautiful existence that you could possibly enjoy the most blissful state that you would love and like to experience finally yeah. that what is coming all all of those inner inner true wishes of bliss that you 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 not only require but desire so much deep down mm -hmm. deep down none of us None of us want um, racial hatred, religious divisions, um, wars, uh, killing, hunger. Mm -hmm. um, you know, religion has done quite a bit on the planet. I mean, it's it's you know, I mean, there's good people with religion. You know, there's a lot of uh, people out there that you know, I I when I grew up and I was young in the church. My my father preached and. Um, you know, and then left when I was two, and I, I was one that always had a lot of questions about stuff. But you're 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 almost put into a like it's taboo to think anything different from the good word and the good book. So you, people tend to not get very far when they have doubts or questions or things of that nature. And be, and I guess that's probably just from our our being educated that way, right? From the time we're born, we, I mean, we're born into this. We're born, you know. Uh, it, it starts there, right? Yep, yep, yep. Um, it's like this. Imagine, imagine you're you're in a dark room and there's all these objects around you, um, and you know you're told to go around and identify them just by by touching. You know, mm -hmm. um, how many how many of those objects will you be able to really, really, truly define and describe and explain and, and 
tell forth their, you know, their um, uh, how they work and how they function. And well, really. it's impossible, really, with without yeah. the sight, their eyesight, you know, and and, right. and knowledge and, and and everything like that. So we've inherited a world where our religious teachers are groping around in the darkness. They have forgotten the true religion that was left here by the ancients. Um, and they go around misrepresenting it. They tell you that all those hieroglyphs down in Egypt, they are from the devil and they were demon-worshipping evil people who were just just interested in evil until, of course, Abraham came along and, and Noah and Moses and King David and, and all of these Jewish people and then God just loved them so much that he couldn't stand the Irish and the Italians and the Mayans and the Aztecs and the Greeks and everybody. They're all, he created them but he just, oh God, they're just so creepy that he yeah. couldn't, but he loved Abraham. I mean, Abraham is just this wonderful man and the only man that deserves to live and all his progeny, even though they were, you know, they might have, you know, King David was a killer um, the mm -hmm. Israelites turned their backs on God and worshipped the calf and worshipped this and Ashtoreth and the poles of the sacred poles of Egypt and and denied him and then eventually they killed they they themselves killed the Messiah that he sent etc. So you can see you can start to sort of discern that it's just a story for goodness sake. It's not yeah. real. God doesn't love the Jews and hate you know the Italians. Yeah, he's not that selective. You know, I mean, no. if you look at it, God is very selective in a lot of those preaching today will be, you know, the first to tell you that, you know, well, he uh, doesn't like these and, you know, you're not supposed to do that and, you know, can't be gay and you can't be this and you can't be of that culture because, you know, it's very confusing, very confusing. Well, that all goes back to that dark room that I mentioned. You know, you're groping around in the dark and you've got all these objects that you have to identify and you can't. And so the age of Pisces is this dark room that comes upon humanity. And you're, you're groping around trying to, you know, work out who Jesus is and who Mary Magdalene is and, and why Jesus had to be crucified to save the world and what is salvation and why are we sinners and, and yeah. why does God care about us so much? He gives us sun and moon and all these planets and water and everything like that. You see so many contradictions and, and so many erroneous teachings about who Christ is and who God is and, and whatever. And so we are, we're just in the, in the thick of the, um, the belief and the doubt and the Pisces period, but Aquarius promises to um, unveil uh, the veil of Isis, you know, pull back the veil of Isis and to, and to, to bring back the, the, the true knowledge that we lost. And, and it is there that we will remember who we are. Plato said that there would be an anamnesis, a remembering in the last days. In the book of Daniel, mm -hmm. chapter 12, it says that many will open their books and will remember, um, you know, the words of, of God and the words of truth, and they will make their robes white in, in, in righteousness and and um, in fact, let me read that because you see a lot of people, um, a, a lot of people, uh, when they read these these scriptures, they really, really do believe in a, in a literal God who has this stylus in his hand who, who actually writes these words. But in fact, it's it's just men who wrote the book. Thirty nine, really, thirty nine men wrote the book and women, mm -hmm. and. Um, and they were just uh, prophets or seers or poets, astrologers, people who knew the cycles. Simple as that. All you have to do is know the cycles. I've explained those cycles in my videos, you see. Okay. You've got the daily cycle, the yearly cycle, and you've got the great year, which is around about 24,000 years. Once you get a handle on those cycles, you can, you can do... <laughs> you know, just a little bit of knowledge of how the solar system works, and you can do your own... Um, you know, prophesying and, and, and so forth. But Daniel says in chapter 12, he says, and during that time, Michael will stand up. Michael is the sun, mm -hmm. um, the sun in the skies, and it's getting wider and wider every day. Uh, the great prince who is standing in behalf of the sons of your people, and there will certainly occur a time of distress such as not has been made to occur since there came to be a nation 
until that time, and during that time, your people will escape. Everyone who is found written down in the book. Wow. And there, and there will be many of those asleep in the ground of dust who will wake up, these to indefinitely lasting life and those to reproach and to indefinitely lasting abhorrence. What that's talking about, the sleep, the sleepful ones are you and I, and we are now awakening. You see, the dead shall rise refers to the dead who are spiritually dead, yeah. and who formerly did not know who they were, you see. And then it goes on to say in verse 3, and the ones having insight will shine like the brightness of the expanse, and those who are bringing the many to righteousness, like the stars to time indefinite, even forever. And as for you, O Daniel, make secret the words and seal up the book until the time of the end. Many will rove about and the true knowledge will become abundant. And then he said, uh, later on it said, um, in verse 8, uh, where is that? It says, many, verse 10, no, no, I'll start from 8 and t through to 10. It says, And as for me, I heard, but I could not understand. So that I said, Oh, my Lord, what will be the final part of these things? And he went on to say, Go, Daniel, because the words are made secret and sealed up until the time of the end. Many will cleanse themselves and whiten themselves and will be refined, and the wicked ones will certainly act wickedly. And no wicked ones will understand but the ones having insight will understand. You see, what that's talking about is, you see the, the, um, the brain-dead ones? Mm -hmm. The ones around us in society that appear to be brain-dead are the ones who have not done their tithing. They have not returned the good sacred oil up the spine back to the Lord of Heaven, the cerebrum, so that the Christ can be crucified in Golgotha, the skull. And... Um, you see, what happens when that oil returns up to the optic thalamus is that um, it um, increases its potency and vibration 1,000-fold and it reignites and reactivates all the dormant brain cells. It's a scientific fact that we, our brain is, is um, saturated with dormant brain cells, dead brain cells, basically. And there's only one way to reactivate them, and that is to return that vibrant spinal cord energy, that oil, so that it can ascend. And that's what it means to be an ascended master. And that's the, that's the secret. I mean, with, with knowing the secret, you can do amazing things, and us as humans are capable of so much more. Yeah, it's the sacred secret, you see, because secret comes from the word secretion, and the secretion comes from the cerebrum, and that secretion goes all the way down to the sacred plexus, which is the bottom, second bottom most chakra. So the sacred secret that the Apostle Paul is talking about in Colossians 1, 26 and 27 is in fact the sacred secretion. It's secreted from Aries, the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world, and it goes all the way down to Scorpio in the generative area where the sacrum is. And though that is what the Apostle Paul said, the sacred secret of the Christ within. And um, it's, it, it is quite sad. It's very, very sad to see that the churches are denying this and uh, causing it, um, telling their um, adherents that... Um, that the Christ is a historical saviour that will come in the clouds and return one day to save you um, because you need a saviour, rather than telling them that they can, if they look within, because the kingdom of God is within, mm -hmm. um, they can do their own salvific work by looking after that salt in their body. You see... The oil is also called the fish. That's why Christians, going back to your question at the start, you spoke about the fish sign, why are Christians called fish? Because the Christos oil that comes from the cerebrum smells like fish. Now, mm -hmm. if you pay attention to your bodily fluids, uh, they will either taste like salt 
all smell like fish. So that True. salt, that fish, that Christ, needs to be looked after because when the oil dries out, you die. We only have a certain amount of oil that comes from the cerebrum. And when, when it's exhausted, um, death takes the, the organism and, um, and uh, physical life ceases to exist. That's why it's, it's so important. That's why it's important to know astrology because once you know astrology, you know that there are 12 inorganic mineral cell salts and those cell salts are the salts that are required for the human organism. Potassium phosphate, mm -hmm. sodium sulfate, silica, um, Num number 12 again. You know, 12, exactly. 12 pops up a lot. <laughs> exactly. And um, the, the cell salt for Aries is potassium phosphate because Aries, as I said, rules the cerebrospinal system and potassium phosphate is the highest vibrating cell salt known to man. Therefore, that is the one that we need to take, consume mostly if we want to have good functioning brains. I mean, you'll never get depressed. You'll never have to worry about depression and, and all of those things and taking Prozac if you supply your body with potassium sulfate. You see? And you can get that from eating walnuts, uh, lime, parsley, um, all sorts of great, great foods which they don't really... Uh, you know, modern uh, nutrition and modern... Um, Science do not do not teach that. You know, no, they don't, they don't, I never learned that in school. That's for sure. That's right. I, I always, when I was in school, I have to admit, history and science were probably my most hated subjects, and I I just despised them. But if I had been receiving this, what you're talking about, it, it it would have definitely been more interesting. I know that they would have had my attention. <laughs> exactly. We would be much much better students because what they do at school is they educate us. They don't enlighten us. Enlightenment, enlightenment comes from light and um, from true uh, intuitive learning. You see, the right brain is connected to Aries, the cerebrum. The left brain is connected to the, to, to the cerebellum. Now, let's take a... Let's take a sh Little little do detour here and go down a little bit of a tangent. When you go to the um, Sistine Chapel in Rome, mm -hmm. um, you see Da Vinci, uh, uh, Michelangelo knew that the dome he was painting is the dome of the head, the cranium. Uh, and um, you see God there is, is, is reaching out to Adam and, and he's, he's extending his finger. That's the cerebrum, which is the God man reaching out to the cerebellum, which is the Adam man. Now, remember I said to you that the science of as above, so below. Right. The zodiac, now, for all those churchgoers who hate the zodiac because it's from the devil. Oh, it's evil. It's evil. It's every time you mention it, it's evil. Yeah, well, um, the, the zodiac in the Jewish system, in Kabbalah, is known as Adam Kadmon. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah. And, and because in the east, there is the ascendant, that's the letter A. Opposite the ascendant, where the sun um, sets, so where the sun rises in the east, that's called the ascendant. The sun ascends. Mm -hmm. Where the sun sets, that's called the descendant. And midday and midnight, these are the meridian. So you have A, D, M, Adam. Uh, so, you know, it's, you don't have to go far to see that this is the true, the true theology, you know. Um, so, when, so when Michelangelo paints God reaching out to cerebellum, you see, cerebellum is different to cerebrum. Cerebrum, as I said, means neutral wax. Cere means wax, and mm -hmm. brum, cerebrum, cerebrum, yeah. brum means neutral. So the fluid is neutral. Until, it, uh, until such time as it reaches the pineal gland and the pituitary gland and it gets dif differentiated into an electrical and magnetic fluid, it is neutral, neuter. But the cerebellum, bellum means war. 
you know, bellicose. Mm-hmm. Heard of people who are bellicose, right. they are like. Right. Well, yeah, that's the cerebellum, the Adam brain, the Adam man. So God is always reaching out to save man. You see, the cerebrum is the super consciousness, and the cerebellum is the subconscious. You see? Yeah. Super and sub. So God is always reaching out and saying, come on up. Come on up to heaven, Adam. Please. Please, cerebellum. Stop being animalistic in your behavior. Stop pretending that you are an animal having a spiritual experience and understand that you are spirits having an, a physical experience. You see? So that's what's kind of going on with humans. We're, we're spiritual but in physical form. I mean, is that how it, it, it began? Because my, my theory has always been, and I'm not an expert by far, but I've always thought that everything goes around. Like a, you know, I mean, eventually, the times we live in now, will humans eventually get back to this, unfortunately? Will, it, will that occur, or we go through different phases? Um, it won't happen to us. It will happen, though, to the ones who did, do not awaken. Remember what Daniel said? He said that, that um, in verse 2 of chapter 12, he said that many will have... Um, uh, let me get that again because I want to be as accurate when I speak. Um, and there will be many of those asleep in the ground of the dust who will awake up these two indefinitely lasting life and those to reproaches and to indefinitely lasting abhorrence. What that's talking about, indefinite means, well, it's not a definite period, it's an indefinite period. But, mm-hmm. but in, this, in this true theology of as above, so below, what it means is that many people will not have awoken, will not have learnt their lessons, will not have done the required good work to ascend into heaven, and therefore they will have to re-engage with the cycle of necessity on other planets, in other kingdoms, in other worlds. And yes, they will have to go through the suffering of of how we have suffered in mm-hmm. the past 50 or 60,000 years as we've gone from golden age to iron age to golden age to iron age. You know, as we go from the summer to the winter and the summer to the winter, this is all has to do with physical suffering, you see. And it's called the cycle of necessity. We, we hopefully, we get raised to more subtle bodies, more like angelic bodies in the fifth dimension. And, um, and our bodies get upgraded, you know, from flesh blood to uh, optic fiber, crystalline, mm-hmm. DNA, etc. We and, and this transformation will happen in the very near future. It's only, you know, months away, really. But um, I look forward to that. Yeah, it'd be great. The galactic alignment, does that have any impact? Because I, I noticed one of the things you uh, talked about in the lectures was that. And um, can you touch on that a little bit? Because I, mean, I find it interesting. It's, uh... Yeah, well, the galactic alignment is exactly what it suggests. It's not a planetary alignment of such where, you know, you have... Um, all the planets lined up in a row and all that stuff. Yeah, like three planets in Taurus or six planets in Aries, you know, squaring with uh, three planets in Libra or something like that. Uh, or uh, so, um, can't square with three planets in Libra, Capricorn. <laughs> yeah. um, but look, um, it's, it's a galactic alignment and because, you see, the, the Milky Way galaxy is this thin dish spinning around in space and it's very, very thin. Therefore, it has an, uh, you know, it has an equator. It has a, um, uh, a plane that it spins on. And, 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 and we, we are actually constantly going above the galactic plane and below the galactic plane every 24,000 years. So, so what's happening at the end of this year on the solstice, the 21st of December, the Earth's axis will be pointing 
in the direction of Scorpio and Sagittarius, which is the center of the Milky Way galaxy. Mm. And, and the summer solstice of the 21st of December will actually be in alignment with that galactic plane. You see, because the summer solstice has been transiting Sagittarius for the last 2,000 years, just like the vernal equinox has been transiting Pisces. I sure didn't know that. I, I never yeah. knew that. Well, see, all the four cardinal points, the two solstice points and the two equinoxes, have been in mutable signs. Pisces, Sagittarius, Virgo, and Gemini. These are signs of duality. These are signs of mutability, change, great change. Mm -hmm. now, now, those cardinal points that have been chugging along like a nice, slow steam train, but eventually what happens is they, they exit the mutable signs and they enter the fixed signs. You see, Aquarius... We say that we're entering the age of Aquarius. Well, that's simply the, the vernal equinox is entering Aquarius. But the winter solstice is entering Taurus. The uh, autumnal equinox is entering Leo. And in fact, in the east, they say we're entering the age of Leo, not the age of Aquarius. The opposite of Aquarius, you see. And um, the summer solstice will approach uh, Scorpio. And these are the four cherubim, the four faces of God, you see. Taurus is the bull, Leo is the lion, Aquarius is the man, and Scorpio is the eagle. And um, in Ezekiel and Revelation, we have a description of God sitting on his throne, and he has four faces. And they each face in the four cardinal directions. The man, the face of the man in front, the face of the lion behind to the left, the eagle, and to the right, the bull. These are the fixed signs of the zodiac. This is the great alignment that is coming, finally, after, well, I guess you could say it's been 4,000 years in the making, or you can say it's 24,000 years in the making, depending on where you start the cycle. Mm -hmm. It's fascinating because the, uh, I mean, what interests me about it all is the aspect of the sun. I mean, the sun is every. If you look around, everything is just you know a lot of symbols with the sun, um, its energy, its power. But I mean, literally, without the sun, we die, right? I mean, without that, there is no, there's no us, am I right? I mean, yeah, the sun is, is everything. Yeah, that's why in the morning it is the risen savior. You see, and that's why the sun says, "Look, I am coming in the clouds. Every eye will see me." Um, and the sun, Jesus, walks on water because at, at, at the sunset and at sunrise, if you're on the beach, you'll see that the sun, in fact, it's does on the walk horizon. On water. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. On the Horus horizon. You see, Horus is the sun. So it's, it's time to stop denying this science. You know, it's time to stop, um, rejecting the true signs and and I'm reaching out to Christians and and churchgoers of all kinds with my presentations to uh, help them to see the true meaning of these ancient scriptures and in the years to come you know shortly like very very soon we will actually be laughing at the fact that we actually considered all those spiritual scientific textbooks to be literal well, yeah. we will laugh at this. Yeah, it's almost like, it, it's almost feels like it's happening already in a sense where changes are taking place in the way people, I don't, I don't know if it's been mostly the internet or just, you know, how people share information and you, and you get to, because knowledge is power, right? I mean, we've all always known that through our lives that the more you know, the, the knowledge and seek, seek the truth, seek the knowledge. Um, I, I'm sure you've gotten quite a few, uh, uh, let's say, I don't know, uh, we, we talked about the taboo of astrology, but I'm sure you've encountered those that, you know, kind of give the finger to you and look at you in a crazy way, and I'm, I'm sure you've experienced that. Oh, yeah, for sure, I do. And <laughs> um, and uh, sometimes it, it, it 
irritates me uh, and sometimes it hurts because it's the people themselves that deny it and ridicule it that are hurting themselves because themselves. they do not realize the um, the amount of suffering that is, is waiting for them because they have failed to grasp the fact that there will be no vicarious redeemer. There never has been and there never will be. There's only one Christ the Saviour and that's the Christ within. And um, unless they do the good work and, and raise their own Christ, I mean, I can't save them. They have to save themselves. And to see them rejecting this beautiful wisdom because they believe what the priests have told them mm -hmm. in their ignorance, um, and they will be deprived. And that's why Jesus says, Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees. You throw away the kingdom, the keys of knowledge, and you hinder these little sheep. You yourselves are not going in and you hinder them from going in, it would be better for you to tie a millstone around your neck yeah. and cast yourselves into the sea. Yeah, we hear a lot about, um, I mean, like like you referred to Santa Claus. I mean, we, we we grew up when we were little kids believing that, right? Remember when we were little and we were like, yeah, this guy's going to bring toys and he's this and that, and it's like, great, you know? And you waited up for him a few times. But then, you know, as you get eight or nine, a little older, whatever, you, you come to know the truth, you feel a little bit, rejected but you know you, you deal with it and you and but you find that it's all been just a, a wash you know just a something designed and created by us by man and and um but the cross i mean um where's that where's that fit in i mean you know jesus supposedly you know died on the cross and all that but what what is the cross where did that whole thing start I mean, is that well, true that's to that um, that's the sun being crucified four times a year when it goes through the cardinal points, you see. The two equinoxes and the solstices. They are crossifixions. They're crossovers. In the Jewish system, they're called Passovers, you see. When, when the sun passes over on the 21st of March, the famous one, mm -hmm. that's the one that we, you know, that's where Easter begins and everything like that. That's why the Jews celebrate the Passover. It's the Passover of the sun. It's passed over from the cold winter into the summer now. You see? Mm. So it's just it's pure science. Um, but going back to um, you mentioned Santa Claus. Now, just under the cerebrum is is the claustrum, mm -hmm. um, and it's spelt the same way as Santa Claus. Really close. Because yeah, because the claustrum is in fact the place where the wax is produced. You see, so. And it's also called the Holy Claustrum or the Santa Claus. So you see, Santa Claus must descend down the chimney, which is the spinal cord, because if he doesn't, he can't bring those presents to the sacred at the bottom of the tree of life. Wow. You see, yeah, the tree of life is all the nerves and all the fluids because it carries the oil. And when the oil dries up, you die. So you see, Santa Claus can be explained. And the claustrum is in the north. You see, they say that Santa Claus lives lives in the north, in the North Pole. Well, mm -hmm. the claustrum is the North Pole. It's right there in the middle at the top of the brain. Amazing. Um, you know, you've got Jacob and his ladder. You know, in Genesis chapter 32, I think it is, Jacob has a dream. He lies, he lies, he lays his head on a stone. Now, that's the stone... That's the sacrum of the vertebrae. You have 33 vertebrae in your vertebra, in the, um, the spinal uh, dorsal uh, bone, okay? Now, now there, are, there are five sections. There's the um, cervical, uh, lumbic, um, the coccyx, uh, the sacrum. Now, the sacrum is five of those vertebrae fused together. And that is Jacob's stone at the bottom of the vertebrae. And um, so that's where Jacob lays his head and then he, and he sees angels climbing up and down the ladder and then he has he has an encounter with an angel. He wrestles, wrestles with an angel. He gets his name changed to Israel, and then he sees God face to face, and he calls that place Pineal. Pineal gland, yeah. Yeah. Now, 
we also have, in the nursery rhyme, we have another version. We have Jack and the Beanstalk. It's the same Jacob. And on the English-British flag, they have the Union Jack. Mm -hmm. Well, because Jack is Jacob, you see, the British flag is the Israelite flag, red, white, and blue. Um, and so, you, you see, Jack and the Beanstalk, Jack was given given all of these seeds by his mother, you see, mm -hmm. and he threw the seeds out the window. Well, Jacob, in Genesis, he works for Laban, his father-in-law, so he can marry Leah and Rachel. Rachel is the, um, is the uh, vernal equinox, and Leah is the autumnal equinox, you see. The children of Israel come from those two equinoxes. Um, but Jacob... He works for Laban, and um, he has to he has tends the flocks, and he causes them. Uh, he puts seeds um, in in the in the drinking vessels for the um, for the sheep and for the goats and everything like that. So he also has to do with seeds and planting, just like Jack and the beanstalk. Um, Jacob ascends the ladder. He sees God. God is gold. You just add an L mm -hmm. to the word God and you have gold because the gold of a fear comes from the cerebrum. That's the wax that the cerebrum produces. Whereas Jack and the Beanstalk, he sees a, a, a goose that lays golden eggs when he goes up and he sees a giant. You see? Mm -hmm. So, so we, have, we have the gospel versions, we have the legends, we have the nursery rhymes and the fairy tales. And they're all telling the same thing. Eve, she eats the poisoned apple. Well, so does Snow White, I think, or, or Sleeping Beauty. Mm -hmm. you, you see? So there's seven dwarfs, yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, Snow White and the seven dwarfs. There you go. Snow White, and there's no whiter than the sun. And the seven colors of the rainbow, they are the dwarfs which are produced by Snow White, the sun. Um, you know, so you can't escape it. It's all science. The nursery rhymes, the legends, the gospels, they're all talking about science and the characters are all the same characters. The planets of the solar system and the stars above and the um, organs in the fleshly body. Maybe that's that. Yeah, maybe that's why people have a, a tough time grasping it because it, it is science. It really is all science. And, and referring back to like when I was a kid in school, I think I hated science because it was so boring. I didn't understand it, and it was just you know dissecting frogs and stuff like that, and and nothing about this, you know. And um, there was there was one other thing, and I know um, I'm very eloquent in illustrating the. Um, what you call the uh, language of law, and it, and it gives a good understanding as you know where we're at with all this today and how we got into the mess we're in, and and uh, like their government, you know the court system, the banks. Um, yeah. Can uh, you want to talk about a little bit about that? Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, for sure. Look, um, in my latest video on YouTube. My uh, YouTube handle is Mr. Astro Theology. Um, you will find there at the top, the very top video, my latest, all my latest are at the top, um, and there's one called Lawful Awakening, you see? And I discuss this, how the dead shall rise. Hmm. Um, and that is the, the sleepful state that we've been in and we awaken from this state and we discover that the government, which is controlled by the Vatican and the churches, are administering a system of sin and salvation. Now, the sin of the Vatican system is, is their system whereby you sign for, um, yeah, to be a Roman citizen, for instance, to have a citizenship, yeah, a passport. A marriage certificate, a birth certificate. You have to sign everything. Yeah, and and sign is basically the sin that they have subjected us to. 
it, sign has a silent G, you see? So, so in their sneaky little system, they get you to beg and apply and, 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 and pray to them for their services. Please, please give me a citizenship. I want to belong to this, to this country. And the countries are just corporations. So, you know, so we, we sin by signing and then they save us when they take us to court. You see, when you go to court, you're being accused, just like in the Inquisition days. You are the right. accused and the prosecutor, the prosecutus, the one standing in your skin, mm -hmm. is bringing the writ, the summons, to court. And a writ also has, writ is spelt W-R-I-T, and the W is silent. So it's, it's a right. Uh, it comes from the Latin word ritus, R-I-T-U-S, which is a religious right. So, so the magistrate is an ordinary who has powers from the church to administer justice. The clerk is the cleric. Um, you're going there for a hearing. Forgive me, Father, for I have sinned. You see? Yeah. You're accused, and this is why they ask you, um, how are you acting today? You see, because... Everybody's going there as an actor. The attorney is there to turn you over. The lawyer is there to lie. He's a liar. Mm -hmm. The magistrate is an ordinary, an officer of the Inquisition. And so what they're doing is they're running the salvage business. Sal comes from salt. You see, you have sinned because you've signed on and you need to be salvaged. So they're going to herd you into jail. You see, and that's the benefits you get from being a citizen on the ship. They give you benefits and services and privileges, no rights. So, so that's the business they're running, which is always a counterfeit of some true system. Everything that Rome offers is a counterfeit. Everything. Yeah, big, big Pharma gives you treatment. It doesn't give you cures. School gives you education. It does not enlighten you. Um, doctors, again, they're treating you. They're not curing you. Um, lawyers are lying and they destroy justice, um, etc., etc. So the real system that they have thwarted is the system of salt and sin, the true system, that I have explained. You see, we, mm. we spend nine months in our mother's womb, so nine of the uh, cell salts are fully developed and three are lacking. And it's those three. So when you're born, say I was born on March the 24th, so I'll, I'll be lacking in all of the cell salt for Aries and the next two, Taurus and Gemini. Now, I know what those are. So Aries... The cell salt for air is potassium phosphate. Taurus is sodium sulfate. And uh, Gemini is potassium chloride. Now, if I consume those in abundance, because I'm deficient in those three and the other nine, I will always supply to my blood all the mineral base that it needs to keep me healthy. I will never, ever, see sickness. In fact, I'll, I'll have perfect health until the day I, I die. And together with saving the salt in the spinal cord and raising it up properly, if, if, if one can, can keep practicing this science perfectly, one will never die. In fact, the Egyptians were teaching this. They were teaching, that's why they were teaching the Zodiac, because they were teaching the 12 salts of salvation and keeping the blood pure and nourished, and they were teaching the science of raising the Christ within, you see. Horus, they called that one Horus. Mm -hmm. And and you see, that's why Pharaoh would wear his um, Uraeus, the serpent, coming out from his forehead, because the Christ, or the, the Kundalini energy that goes up the Pingala and reaches the pineal gland, when the pineal gland is activated, that's the serpent, 
you see? Mm -hmm. And that's the serpent that climbs the caduceus of Apollo. Apollo's the staff, the rod of Apollo, or the rod of Aaron, for instance. You remember Moses and Aaron? Aaron had a rod, and Aaron had those two serpents where he changed those two serpents when Janus and Jambres were were tempting him in front of Pharaoh, and he turned his rod, you know, swallowed up the rod of Janus and Jambres, etc. Mm -hmm. Well, this is all dealing with the caduceus. Aaron is the, um, the rod of Aaron is the spinal cord. Now, it's interesting that the spinal cord is exactly 18 inches long, a half a yard. So there's your yardstick. You see, in Revelation, where St. John is measuring the temple of God with, with the, the cubit, the sacred cubit, the, measurement, the measuring rod, that is the only measuring rod that exists, which is the rod in the back in your backyard. You see, the mm -hmm. yardstick is in the backyard, in your back. Is it the same of our, our measuring system that we have today, or did they were they using a completely different uh, measuring system? Exactly the same, my friend. The yard, the yard, um, the yardstick is the spinal cord, 18 inches, exactly one half of a yard. The yard is a sacred measurement. You know, and, and there's all this confusion when you when you look up yard in the etymolo etymological dictionary. It um it tells you that um, King Henry VIII um, uh, introduced it as from the tip of his nose to his thumb, and that was the yard. You see, mm -hmm. or or they tell you that the yard is there's another there's another um, etymological explanation that it's um, the average length around the waist. You see, you measure the waist line. But um, they're all wrong. <laughs> they all are. These are educated types, and educated types are just repeaters of erroneous information because they're, they're groping around in the darkness. Uh, the measuring rod is the only one that exists, which is the River Jordan in your spine, the spinal cord, 18 inches long. And at the bottom is the sacred plexus, and at the top, is the heaven, the optic thalamus. And so the more, the more you get into this science, the more you begin to see that the science of as above and so below is the only science that is worthy of our attention. And you'll find that when you understand the zodiac and Adam Kadmon and Kabbalah and you realize that Aries is in the head and so is Taurus and then you look up in the sky and when you look up at Taurus in the sky, you'll notice that Taurus contains the uh, high 80s and the Pleiades, and they are the most cherished of all the signs in the, in the heavens, the Pleiades, you know, that's the jewel, the gem in the heavens. Um, the Bible in Job chapter 38 talks about the Pleiades. They are called the Seven Sisters. In Japanese, they are called Subaru, and they have a, a car brand, you know, the Subaru car brand. Mm -hmm. Uh, just check out the um, the emblem for Subaru, and you'll see that it's uh, six little stars. You see the Pleiades. Well, obviously we're we're, we're different. Um, I mean, we have you have okay on the planet and humans, you have male and female, and we are obviously different, built different. We all have two eyes, nose, ears, and mouth. But um, I mean, in your best ability, how how did that origin began with the, you know, I mean, there's some believers that think, you know, it was just created from a rib and then, you know, there was woman and what, what is your, uh, what's your take on that? Well, again, it's talking about um, science. You see, Adam is the atom, the unit the one, mm -hmm. the indivisible one. And Eve gives you the word even or the number two. So atom and even, one and two, come from the Garden of Eden because God produces the whole universe with numbers as Pythagoras teaches. It's the language of the universe. So when God takes a rib from atom, you get an atom and you take an electron out of that atom and put, in it, put it into another atom, you've just done 
what's called ionic bonding. You've taken a rib out of atom and you've made a negative ion out of one atom and a positive ion out of another atom. So that's mm -hmm. why Adam is positive and Eve is negative. See, single numbers, uh, uh, sorry, odd numbers are mm -hmm. positive and masculine and even numbers are negative and feminine. And this is why Eve is supposedly so evil because she divides. You see, mm -hmm. the one becomes two. And Pythagoras used to spit on the ground when the number two was mentioned because it's the number of division. And you see, Eve divided the um, the peaceful world. She introduced sin into the world, you see. Oh, this mm -hmm. two, this number, oh, it's terrible. Um, and And so, you know, you see, there are many, many scientific gems in the book of uh, Genesis. Hmm. It's a book dealing with um, with great Kabbalistic wisdom and gematria, or gematria, you see. It's very deep. <laughs> oh, it's very deep, you know, but look. But I get it. I mean, I, I, I understand a lot of it, and I'm amazed that I do, whereas maybe 20 years ago, I'm, I'm my mind wasn't there, you know. I, I probably probably didn't want to absorb it, you know. So, no, that's right. Um, but but yeah, it's just uh, I find it amazing. A lot of the, uh, the the symbology aspects of the cosmos, and you know, well, why did that happen anyway? I mean, why did you know the the terminologies for things get changed around? I mean, I can understand thousands of years ago that we we had our ancestors had some major you know major capabilities. They still can't figure out how they built the pyramids, they still can't figure out a lot of, you know, or, or they know and they're not telling us, but um, I mean, they, they did some amazing things, so they, they had to be enlightened with some knowledge and um, you know, you hear people all the time say, well, you know, I was uh, you know, I, ha I have the answer for this and the reason, you know, how they built the pyramids was because of this and some silly little, you know things they come up with, but but they were in tune. They were in tune with all this, right? I mean, they, they, they had to have known. Oh, they did know. Look, um, all the knowledge came down to us is very, very sacred. Look at the Hebrew language. I mean, even in English, we say 1, 2, 3, A, B, C, mm -hmm. um, Adam, Eve, and Cain. Let's have a look at those characters. One is Adam, two is Even, and then you've got three. Have a look at the letters. Uh, the first letters of the Hebrew alphabet are Aleph and Beth. Aleph is the one, again, it, it, it connotes, denotes oneness, and Beth is just another word for both. Hmm. Mm. It represents, yeah, Beth means house in, 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 in Hebrew, but it also means both. So you've got Aleph and both, one and two. Adam and Eve. Uh, there's, there's, oh, there's a lot of. I can go on and on and on. I can go on and on and on about about numbers and and languages and gematria. No, oh, we'd be we'd be there for for not only hours but days. <laughs> oh, it never ends. There's so much interesting stuff. But I know that most of your listeners are pretty pretty aware of it, so I won't concentrate on that. I'll try and sort mm -hmm. of dig dig into some stuff that they um. Well, someone had a someone in in, in a chat room um, had a question for you. Um, what was your take on aliens um, and where that all fits into this whole thing? Because there's a, there's, a, there's a lot of things that you know. I'm sure you've noticed out there where people, you know, um, we have visitors. We have you know, what's what's the whole alien thing to you? I mean, what's what's your take on it? Oh yeah, visitors visitors have been coming to this planet for. Um forever um, we're visitors um, and and of course they're out there there's no doubt about that and um, are they and, us I mean are, are they like us are they us because I, I, I've had a crazy theory before that you know in this circle of the universe that that may be us in a different you know 
you know, different time, different, you know, awareness, consciousness, ability. I don't Yeah. Know. Yeah. They they are us in that they partake of the same undivided, unconditioned consciousness from the source. We all come from the source. Right. Um, but they are different orders of beings, you see. Mm-hmm. There are we are a very special um, order of human being. We have our own karmic evolution and development that is unique to us. We have a unique laws and n- unique, um, you know, systems in place for our development. They mm-hmm. have different. They have different laws and different different ways. Uh, for for their development, so they're just different orders. For instance, we are known to be from the Piscean. We are the Pisceans, you see, mm-hmm. uh, and and that's and that's um, the human. The Aquarius is the um, the angel, uh, and the Capricorn is the archangel. You see, so right. every sign and every twelve parts of the sphere around us has different orders of beings. So we are fulfilling this this part and we are we're actually being watched by a lot of uh, extraterrestrials because where we are in the stream of time is very very unique. Um what is about to happen has never happened before really in the universe. And um what what we will inherit as awakened uh, sovereign, enlightened beings mm-hmm. is so wonderful that it's just it's irresistible and 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 just too wonderful to contemplate. It's mind-blowingly wonderful what is coming for mm-hmm. the portion of mankind that is awake. They will receive the fulfilment of all the great prophecies in the past that have promised a great utopia, a great Paradise and and, and at one minute, you know the Hebrews use the word atonement. Well, that comes from three words: at one meant. Meant is the mental, and to be at one mind or at atonement means to be at a oneness mentally with the universe, and that's what we will re- we will re- uh, receive and achieve. Whereas the sleeping ones. The sin that they practice, which is the greatest sin, which is to to stay asleep yeah. and to resist and refuse and deny and naysay the true signs, they will suffer the consequences. Unfortunately, there's no there's no hope for them to be saved at this time. And they would prefer it that way. I mean, you know, the 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 ones that have us enslaved, so to speak. I mean, that's that's the way they would prefer it, right? I mean, because they, I mean, like the, the the banks, the Vatican, everything that you know controls and and runs everything and and um, on the planet. I mean, they have a they they have a big machine going, um, all for profit, and that to me, I think, is what really enslaves people: the whole monetary money system, the whole banking thing. And I mean, do you see that coming to an end? Oh, it's finished. It's over. It's a, it was a Ponzi scheme from the very beginning. Um, but, clever one. Um, very clever one, too. I mean, they, they had it down. I mean, they got it all, you know, they got the whole system down, you know. And, um, yeah, they don't, they don't want critical thinkers like us. They don't, you know, that's why I say if they, you know, they, they wouldn't think very fondly of you for spreading information and knowledge because they don't want that. They want you to keep, you know, everyone to keep taking their pills and their medications and, you know, not curing you. But, and that's an, that, that's another thing. I mean, everybody's on some kind of drug, you know, from the time almost we're born now. They're giving babies vaccines and stuff. And then when you get old, they're feeding you more shit, more pills, more, you know, this, take this, take that. Some of those are, are from nature, which is ironic because it, it, it the earth provides all that, right? I mean... There's herbs, there's there's natural products and natural things that, you know, they won't tell you about. 
and they, and they don't want you to know about because they don't yeah. want you to make any money. No, that's right. Yeah, that's right. You see, if 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 you were told, um, and we practiced the ancient science of curing, yeah. uh, and you were told that all you needed was 12 cell salts, just supply your body with those 12 cell, cell salts, and you do not have to worry about anything to do with your health. Well, you'd be you'd be a keen student of of this, and you would practice it, and you would be healthy. Um, uh, whereas they they you see this is this is how they work. Okay, mm -hmm. they tell you that fluoride is good for your teeth, don't they? Yeah. Well, it's true, but 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 it's only a half truth because calcium fluoride is good for your teeth, not sodium fluoride. So they give you sodium fluoride. And the dentists are there, and you know, and and they'll tell you, and they'll laugh at you if you tell them that fluoride's bad. They like fluoride's good for <laughs> your teeth. I'm a dentist. I should know. Um, no. But but what they don't get told is that the the cell salt calcium fluoride for cancerians um, is is good for the teeth. No. Um, you see. Silica is the cell salt for Sagittarius. Silica is very, very important too. You know, it's for the hair and nails and skin and all the sinewy parts of the body. You can get that from the skin of vegetables and the skin of fruit that contain a lot of silica. Mm -hmm. um, but, but what they do is they, they make some sort of a, a chemical concoction and they put it in a jar and everything tell you oh, this has got silica in it you know but mm -hmm. it's, it's synthesized it's not yeah. natural the lab created stuff yeah um, now now this is where they go wrong so so what they do is you go down to the local health store and you buy calcium and magnesium and and all of these things but they're they're all synthesized and your body doesn't use them there's no real salt in them the body needs the salt have a look at the salt for Aquarius. The salt for Aquarius, believe it or not, is um, sodium chloride. <laughs> you know what that is, don't you? Like, uh, like baking soda? Or, or table salt. Table, yeah, regular table salt, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but, but when you go to the store and you buy salt, table salt, it's basically only, it's only sodium, I think it is, um, because... What they do is they they heat the salt up and then they cool it rapidly. And what happens is the salt um, molecules have very, very sharp edges, very angular edges, and they're like little bits of glass. Yeah. So you're putting salt on your fish and chips, you know, and you're eating all this salty food, mm -hmm. but you're actually putting little crystals that are sharp as, as, as glass into your bloodstream and it's tearing your veins on the inside. It, it's, it's shredding your veins, you see, and it's, causing, and it's causing problems to the blood. So the salt, the sodium chloride that you should be taking is naturally dried sea salt, mm. you mm -hmm. see, rather than the processed salt. And that's why... Uh, there was a campaign, remember, in the 70s and 80s to, you know, stop stop the salt intake. We're, we're eating too much salt and yeah. we're overweight and everything. Not sodium, so yeah. Yeah. Whereas salt is the salvation. Hmm. Salvation comes from salt. And you get all these words like salutations. Why do we greet each other with salutations? What's salt got to do with greeting each other? Well... Because another word for, for salt, uh, for uh, salutations, in, in Italian we say salute. Yeah, when you salute, salute someone. Yeah, exactly. Salute means health. Wow. In Spanish, saludos means health. When you have a salad, you're having something with salt in it. Hmm. When your saliva is salty. When you get a salary, you're being paid in salt because salt is the great preserver. The Roman, the Roman army was paid in salt. Oh, those Romans. Yeah, those Romans. So, so all of this good science about salt has been lost, and yet 
it is in our culture. It's in our etymology. It's in our, it's in our religious texts, but we're misreading them. You see, we're waiting for a vicarious human or God-like saviour to come in the clouds to save us. And it's right in front of us. It's all around us. It's, it's right within us. Yeah. Wow. Oh. Yeah, and just... another word, another interesting word that comes from salt is halo. Halo comes from the Greek halos, which mm -hmm. means salt. So when you have a halo, when you've returned <laughs> the good oil up to the optic thalamus, mm -hmm. um, and then your dormant brain cells are reactivated, you then acquire what appears to be a halo. And many saintly people have been seen um, with, with halos around them, you see. Mm -hmm. and that's why we draw these beautiful pictures of saintly people that have halos, because halos comes from salt, salvation. You know, we, you get mm -hmm. uh, the word halcyon comes from halos. Mm -hmm. The word uh, halogen, a halogen light, comes from halos. It means the salt that lights up, you see. Um, so... So if only we pay attention and we use our intuition rather than our logic and reason, we'll come to these truths. It's very easy to see the interrelatedness of all things. Mm -hmm. And that's in fact what I'm teaching. I'm teaching syncretism. Syncretism is the science of relating all things to each other rather than compartmentalizing and dividing and separating the sciences. Music is gematria is mm -hmm. physiology, is astrology, etc. They are all interrelated. They're all different languages saying the same thing. You see, if I, if I said, if I were talking to you in Italian right now... Mm -hmm. I wouldn't understand I would, you. <laughs> yeah, you, but, but it's no reason for you to say that I'm speaking a pseudo language. Right. You wouldn't say, hey, Santos, come on, that's a, that's a false language. That's a pseudo language. I don't understand it. Mm -hmm. rather you would say hey you're speaking a foreign language you're probably saying the same thing but with different sets of words well that's what the difference between Judaism and Christianity is they're just two different languages same teaching the same science the science of salt and light and salvation um, neither can accuse the other of being a pseudo religion because they are just different languages same meaning, just different, written different language. Yep. And that's where a lot of people get confused with things, you know. I mean, if you look back just over the last 10 years in our life, look at all the things that's happened on the planet. People forget, you know, with 9-11, all the, the major events and wars. I mean, people have a short memory span, so they for, forget even just ten, things 10 years ago. And, and we've really forgotten all this. I, I believe that. I, I believe that. Like you said, we, it's just a forgotten knowledge. Yeah. That's all it is. That's all it is, uh, Michael. And we can we can restore this. We can actually we can we can pretty much instantly have a beautiful, beautiful world where we can be joyous and happy, and just live with abundance and true currency, which is love. If, if you have love in your heart, you have the true currency. Mm -hmm. uh, money is not a currency. It's not a, not a currency at all. You know? It's a fictional false currency, and it, and, it, and, it, and it actually costs to have it. Yeah. That's what interest is. It costs us to use money. Um, these are all fictional false things that we need to you know, put behind us, and we can do that. Once we embrace... The, the truth that are in these documents and we stop denying, you know, we, there won't be a need for Jehovah's Witnesses to criticize the Mormons who criticize the, Pro the Pentecostals who criticize the Catholics mm -hmm. who criticize the Orthodox. We won't need to divide Christ into all these factions and franchises. We can unite the Christ and we can all be part of the Christ. You see, the Church Fathers like Eusebius and Augustine they declared in their works that um, Christianity always was and always has been and always will be. They said from, from, from ages, 
from eons past, from the mists of time, there has always been Christianity. It goes way back. Oh, it goes back way, 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 way beyond our conscious memory. It always has been because Christianity is the science of light. And wherever there is light, and wherever there is Adam Kadmon, there is Christianity. It's based on Adam Kadmon, the man in the sky, repeated in the man below. That's why the Elohim, the stars, mm -hmm. say, let us make man in our image. We are in the image of the zodiac. Aries is in the head and Pisces is in the feet. And when you look, you will see, when you look carefully, you will see that every sign is in the right place. Mm -hmm. And none of the parts of this science are out of place. Aries, for instance, is cardinal fire. The cardinal fire, fire is a, another word for electricity. Water is another word for magnetism. Okay? So Aries being cardinal fire in the head where the cerebrum is, see the cerebrum desires electricity right. because it's an electrochemical computer. It needs electricity. Now, the other fire sign, the other two fire signs are Leo and Sagittarius. Leo is the heart. The heart also needs electricity. It's, uh, in other, without electricity, it cannot. So well, we have water in our in our bodies, right? We have, uh, exactly. So much exactly. water in our. Yeah, and then Sagittarius rules the liver. The liver also requires electricity. Uh, Taurus is the earth sign, fixed earth. Well, Taurus corresponds with the mouth and the lower head. And what do you put in your mouth? Well, you put, you put earth, vegetables, fruit, the, the product of the earth. That's why Taurus is earth. Gemini is air. Gemini is the lungs. Mutable air. Because the lungs mutate the air. It turns oxygen into carbon dioxide, and so it mutates the air. Well, there you go. Gemini is the mutable air sign. Cancer, cardinal water, it's the breast. Mm -hmm. That's where the mother feeds her child with her milk, the waters of life from cancer. Leo is the heart. I've already suggested that that is a fire sign and the heart needs fire, electricity. Virgo is the belly, mutable earth. What happens in the belly? Well... The earth is mutated. The fruits and the vegetables that you've just eaten in Taurus, the mouth, mm -hmm. now travel down to Virgo, mutable earth, and get mutated into excrement, and then they need to be discharged. Libra, air sign, cardinal air, the kidneys. Hmm. Scorpio, water, fixed water, the generative area. That's where you generate, you see. Without water, there is no generation. The waters of the ovaries, the waters of the sperm, etc., etc. There is no, there is no misalignment. There is nothing that is out of place that has been sort of, you know, pushed in like, like a jigsaw puzzle with parts that don't fit. It's all perfect science. Yeah, it's, all a, the, it's, it's like a like a intricate machine. It's nothing out of place. Nothing Everything is out fits of where it fits. Everything fits where it fits. I've explained this in all of my videos. For the listeners who are keen, they can spend many, many hours watching my videos and understanding this science. And it is a deep science. And it is a true science. And it is the only science worth investigating. All the rest is for fools. And on YouTube, your uh, your name is Mr. Astrotheology, is that correct? Did I get yeah, that right? <laughs> Mr. Astrotheology, and it's one word, and I have 16 or 17 videos up, and they're all about two or three hours long, so there's a lot of information. Excellent, excellent. Um, Santos, I'm going to take a quick couple minute break, if that's okay with you, and I have a couple yeah. of questions after that. Beautiful. That's all right. Okay. Excellent.
All right, we're back. ToxicRealityRadio.com with Santos Bonacci and Santos. Um, what do you? What is your take on the Knights Templar? The the the, the whole Freemasonry thing? Because I've seen a lot of different uh, opinions out there on that. Do you have any knowledge of where that originated? Well, Freemasonry is is the system that um, that uh, that is our gospels and and uh, legends and mythology, etc. It is Freemasonry. Masonry um, comes from you know carpentry comes from to build um, to make to make the house. Um, the letter M, and this is explained by uh, George Carey. Um, George Carey was a an occult scientist who spoke about the twelve cell salts and the zodiac and the um, the Christ within. But he explains the, the word Mason. Now, the M, all the letters have to do with masonry. You mm-hmm. see, what I'm teaching is masonry. It, it it teaches you how to build your temple, the temple of Solomon, which is your body. So it is Freemason. We should all be Freemasons. We should all be Jews. We should all be Christians. You, you see what I mean? Yes, um, right. When you go to the true, <laughs> the true science that is underpinning all of this structure, this beautiful structure, which we, we now call religion, and it's fallen from its lofty, graceful throne, and, and, and it's now like a, a business. It's like a cheap, you know, yeah. a whorehouse of, of prostitution and merchandise and money changes and, and people that are gambling on the stock market. And, uh, and just, it's a rotten little hellhole that we've created. But, but, but when you go to the original roots of all of this, of Freemasonry and Christianity, it's all the same, you see. Mm-hmm. Now, the M has to do with um, the mother. The M and the A in the word Mason, it has to do with the father. And and the S is the son. Um, so you've got May, son. So you've got mother. Alpha is always the father. The A stands for air, and air is spirit, and spirit is the father. You see, the material is the mother, the matter. Mm-hmm. In, the, in this science. So, Mason, so you've got M A S. You've got mother, father, and son. Right? And the O, just before the N, N, of course, is, is the fish, the Christ, the seed. Nun. In other words, in Hebrew, N is spelt, is, is called Nun or Nun. Uh, as in as in Joshua, the son of Nun, you see, yeah. Joshua is is a solar hero, and being the son of Nun, Nun is also the seed or the fish. Uh, you see, so Mason, mother, father, son. The O is um, has to do with the universal. Uh, well, let me get back to that. I'll, I'll, okay. I'll, I'll search that in, in, in his book. Yeah, but, at, but the N at the end uh, has to do with this uh, very um, seed. So that's what masonry is all about. It's, it's innocent. Mm. Um, now, the reason why a lot of bad is being said about, you know, the Freemasons and the mm. Knight, Knights mm. Templar and everything like that is because, well, the controllers of the system... Um, the Catholic Church, the the creators of all the fictions, the Empire, um, they have infiltrated all of the religions, all of the governments, all of the structures, all of the banks, the the and the the um, the families of this these corporations because the Vatican is owned by by families. Yeah. You know the Julian family, the Piso family of Rome. Um, they, these are corporations, and they're owned by families. You see, and they're still operating and functioning today, right? 
Yeah, yeah. So those those are the families who send out their Jesuit armies to go and infiltrate all of these organisations. For instance, one one example: the Jehovah's Witnesses. Uh, the founder of the Jehovah's Witness was a Freemason, Charles Taze Russell, and um, he was killed on the 39th of October. He was murdered by Judge Rutherford, the second president of the Jehovah's Witnesses. Now, you won't read this just anywhere on, on, on you know, in any book, but I know that this is this is how it happened. Uh, Jehovah's Witnesses will deny this, but. He was a Jesuit infiltrator, you see? Right. Um, because Charles Taze Russell was talking about Gematria, the the pyramids, you know. Um, he was talking about deep esoteric science, and he was getting out of hand. So they had to put a stop to that, and they, they brought in their infiltrator, and they murdered Charles Taze Russell on the 29th of... Um, on the um, 31st of uh, October, which is ha- Halloween Eve. Mm-hmm. And it's a very, very popular date for assassinations. Indira Gandhi was assassinated on that day. Uh, River Phoenix was killed on that day. Um, I've got a list. I don't know whether I can find it quick enough for today's show, but I've got a list of all these people that were assassinated and killed on on Halloween Eve. It's the day of assassinations, see? Mm -hmm. Uh, So they got rid of him because he was going to actually, you know, uh, deepen his light and truth. And they quickly had to make sure that um, this organization was infiltrated and poisoned. But, um, and and of course, their money was coming from, from the Rothschilds and from B'nai B'rith. So you'll find that um, these families are very, very busy uh, funding... Um, their uh, their armies like the Jesuits and the Dominicans and the um, Franciscans and the Benedictines and all of these creeps, the Wilderbergers, mm-hmm. to make sure that all of these beautiful Freemasonic and true Christian organisations are infiltrated and perverted the moment they are born on the face of this planet. That's how they work. Mm. And then there's been lots of wars. I mean, they... They fund the wars and they create the wars, and um, it's just—I don't know—it it almost really pisses you off when you really discover what has been done. I mean, I know for myself when I when I look deep into it, I I just think about all that's happened and all the needless wars and deaths and atrocities, and you know, and, and yep. wonder how it got there. You know. Yeah. Um, you see. They uh, they need to prop up their house of card cards mm-hmm. uh, with well they need support you see so they've got all the money and it's easy to put big chunks of cash in the back pocket of politicians and lawyers and liars and mm-hmm. and and the criminals and the dupes and the foot soldiers that they use. And it's easy to infiltrate an organisation. You just give them a donation of, you know, $60 million and just say, oh, uh, along with the uh, donation, we're going to put one of our people on your board mm-hmm. so that, you know, we can make sure that that money's spent properly. And that's how they do it. And, um, and they've produced scientifically all of the uh, depressions and wars that have ever existed on the planet. Empire one, has done that. Yeah, one big Empire. giant corporation. And that's what it is. Related Empire. to the United States being a corporation, that's exactly what it is. Yeah, well, uh, since 1871, when the um, when the 1871 Act was implemented and uh, DC became a corporation of Rome, that's how it happened. DC is a corporation of Rome, and they tell you, because they... Um, they uh, they have the fasci of Rome in the, in in Congress when the president is speaking to uh, you know to the, to Congress. He's standing in front of a um, a military uh, admiralty law flag of the United States with the fasci of Rome on flanking each side, telling you that it's a Vatican corporation. So they don't hide it. 
<laughs> they, they hide it in plain sight so you don't see it. Rome has survived quite a while, hasn't it? I mean, I always thought there was something that just died out. You know, you read your history books and that sort of thing, and um, but it's alive and well. Oh, yeah. yes. Rome is alive and well. It's prospering. It's very, very healthy, and it um, it runs the whole system. Rome is the uh, the chief tax collector of the world. They um, they run it. They uh, they deal in in taxes, and they've got the best third party tax tax collector. They've got Jesus Christ, the Son of God, saying that you have to render unto Caesar what is Caesar's. You see. Mm-hmm. And of course, Christian churchgoers take that to mean that uh, God put Caesar in his place. Therefore, we pay, we um, owe our taxes to Rome, and um, well, that's where that's where they get it from. You know, you're paying taxes because you've been told that that Jesus, your Lord, uh, sanctioned that, and um, or, or, or uh, you know, con- condoned it. And uh, blessed it, and said mm-hmm. that uh, you would be um, in God's favor if you do that. So that's why churchgoers are such good taxpayers, you know. Oh yeah, and good Rome, donators to you know the church. You know they pass around the little thing, you know. And oh they, yeah, oh yeah. The the Vatican loves love uh, all the Protestants. They love them. They love the Jehovah's Witnesses. The Vatican, they love the Mormons. They lo- they love each other. They're all in bed with each other. This is. The Vatican is the great harlot, and her prostitute children are the uh, the churches of Christendom. They are no different to the Vatican. They teach the same bullshit story of a redeemer who tells you to pay taxes to Rome. What a crock of shit! Yeah, and people um, gladly and willingly do it. Yeah, it's a crock. And um, this is how it works, man. You, you, you know, you get the most powerful organization in the world called Rome and the most rich, the richest organization preaching their vomitous uh, crap through their podiums and through their literature and uh, people go and believe it because they think, well, there it is, there's the Catholic, it's oh, it's rich, it's, it's, uh, the pontiff is, is God's servant on earth and whoa, and they, um, they fear and tremble, at, fear and trepidation at all this, this rubbish and they, uh, they buy it hook, line and sinker to their own detriment. And then, the, the, of course, we have the king and queens. And it, where does all that play into it all, anyway? Why is, why do we have a king and queen sitting over there on their thrones? And that, that whole family ordeal, what's that all about? Well, again, um, these, are, these are families. You'll find that the Windsor family, who are the Saxico, the Gotha, Guelph families mm-hmm. from uh, Venice, You'll find that they have huge stakes in the Vatican. You'll find that that, that they are they are linked at the hip. There's always, as Jordan Maxwell says, there's always a religion that that is political, and there's all the politics, and there's never been a political uh, organisation that is not slightly religious. They work hand in hand. They um, they feed each other. They work together. They are a conspiracy. They are a cabal. Um, and it's a conspiracy to uh, to control and um, and uh, rule man mankind. That's why you have monarchies. You see, um, yeah, you made reference to the crown, and they wear crowns and all that good stuff. Yeah, the crown and the cross. You'll always see. You know the uh, the Knights Templar crown and cross. Well, that's what it is. It's it's actually the fact that um, they are two hands. Um, of the same individual, uh, the left hand will be the priest mm-hmm. and the right hand will be the king. Uh, rather than we being our own priests and kings, like the Bible said, says you will be a nation of kings and priests because we must be priests unto ourselves and we must be kings. We must live as kings. If we live as slaves and servants, well, then we allow others to rule it over us and lord it over us, and that's not the way it was meant to be. We were given free will because we were free, and we are free. Yeah. And so the sooner we recognize that we don't have to oblige when the government sends us their little papers, you know, mm-hmm. uh, yeah, pay, yeah. and pay that, and here's a little bit of paper with your uh, cap- capito... Um, 
Diminutio Maximus uh, name on it. In other words, all capital letters. So when something turns up in your mailbox and it has all that that all caps yeah. name, you know that that is a corporation. That's the person that you have. It's not the person that you are. Mm-hmm. You see, they 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 made us to be corporate persons so that they could tax us and do whatever else they want to do to us. And scratching and clawing to get to the top to be CEO, as it was yeah. in my business. Yeah. yeah, climb this corporate ladder that actually doesn't exist, but you can climb it nonetheless. Yeah, and 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 you you look at you look at those corporate. I always, I mean, you look at corporate types, women women in particular. They they they're vicious. You know, like your Hillary Clintons. Women that have bought the corporate ladder, you know, CEO, uh, keep up with the Joneses lie, they are so aggressive, you know, they are, they're way worse than men. Oh, oh yeah. man, oh, <laughs> yeah, but men, men, you know, men are, men are doing all the killing, you know, you don't see armies of women, so they're, they're killing themselves, they're murdering themselves by living in the fiction and by believing that they are their bodies. We are not our bodies. We are not our names. Yeah. We are not anything. We're that, given a name when we're born, right? I mean, mine was Michael, but we all have different names. And um, Yeah, that, and everybody's wondered about that. You know, we, 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 I guess we have to have names in order to exist on documents and whatever, but... Yeah. Hey, uh, Michael, let me explain the word Mason now. I've just found it in the book. Um, oh, great. So you've got M-A-S-O-N, and this is what uh, George Carey says in his book, The Wonders of the Human Body. Hmm. George Carey. Uh, I think he wrote this book in early 1900s. But anyway, on page... Um, wow, I can't even give you the page because he's got... Oh, yes, I can. It's page uh, 114. Okay. Uh, it's the title is a big title. The wonders of the human body: physical regeneration according to the laws of chemistry and physiology. Physiology. Mm-hmm. So the M he says M or Mem is the thirteenth letter of the Hebrew alphabet, also the thirteenth letter of the English alphabet, and means woman, Mary, water, or mother. A the first letter is Aleph, an ox or male strength, father. S or Sin here indicates that the woman and man or mother and father, Adam and Eve, sinned or fell short of something. The early Christians before the Antichrist, Constantine appeared, understood the wonderful letters. Divine wisdom, seeing that M and A had fallen short, devised a plan to save the M and the A. O from Ain the 16th letter, represents wisdom or the all-seeing eye, the optic thalamus, the eye of the chamber in physiology. This is the eye of Freemasonry, the third eye. If thine eye be single, the whole body will be full of light. And you see that in a lot of signs. And Sorry? We, and, and you see the, the, the all-seeing eye in a lot of uh, symbols and signage we have out today. I noticed yeah, that. It's just, a, it's just a symbol. It's just mm-hmm. a you know a hieroglyph. That's all it is. It's not evil. Mm-hmm. It's not good. It's not. It's, it's a symbol. It, you know, like I mean, what can you say? Um, is the um, is the steering wheel of my car evil or is it good? Yeah. Uh, is the is the tree on the hill over there? Is that good or is it? I mean, it's, it it is. Too associated by. I mean, we have corporations that have. Symbology and their, you know, emblems. Some of it's, you know, the sun, the sun rays, and uh, you know, different things like that. I mean, I've I've seen videos on on that and stuff. It's, it's interesting. Yeah, they just are. They are symbols that teach. Whether mm-hmm. whether you want it to be good or bad, that's up to you. I mean, mm-hmm. the people who 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 just everything that is not in their books is mm-hmm. totally, totally, totally evil and and mm-hmm. condemned and. and well, this is, you know, this is childish and ridiculous. Right. Um, but the all-seeing eye here interposes and sends his son to save 
and supply the deficiency caused by the act that resulted in the fall when Eve and Adam ate the fruit. Now, believe you me, this guy does not believe in the literal Adam and Eve. He's mm-hmm. talking about the, the, the myth. Mm-hmm. And the N, nun, N-U-N, in Hebrew, is the fish or the sea that's born every 28 and a half days in the solar plexus. So you see, Mason is made up of, of those two letters, mother and father, M and A, and then the word son. So the mother and the father and the son. You see, it's all about, it's all, Freemasonry is all about this, this beautiful science. It's not some scary thing. Uh, of course, there are some scary Freemasons because they, well, they're scary and they choose to be scary and they've been infiltrated themselves and they don't know any of this science. They think they do, but they're just a bunch of buffoons just like the churchgoers that they laugh at. Yeah, a lot of it's dri- you know, fear-driven. You know, mm-hmm. Look at our society today. I mean, it's all fear-driven. It's, and it's worse. I think it's worse it's ever been. Yeah. Yeah, especially for the sleeping masses. Uh, for us, our world, our inner world, grows more and more beautifully every day, but our outer world is in distress. When you look outside, you see distress, wars and famines and all sorts of rubbish. Right. But when you look in, you find a different story. You'll find that you're, you're transmuting at a very, very quick rate and you're 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 ascending. Mm-hmm. If you pay attention, you'll notice that you are ascending. For all these people that are expecting massive kundalini experiences and third eye openings and all sorts of whiz bang stars in the sky, I'd be inclined to say to them just be patient, do your mm-hmm. breathing, eat good foods, raw foods or raw foods. Mm-hmm. Um, drink good clean water with no sodium fluoride in there, which is a poison. Um, get into the 12 cell salts and just ascend slowly and patiently because it is a natural development. It is natural. It's natural for us to ascend. Only the, only the people who are sleeping and determined to stay asleep will miss out mm. on the ascension that is coming because they're going to church and they're being told that there's a rapture coming. You know, they're going to yeah. be rapt- taken off with Christ in the clouds. The clouds are the cerebrum. Now, where the hell does that come from, the uh, rapture thing? It comes from the ascension, you see. Because the scriptures say that when the Christ returns, and he returns with a trumpet call, and he will call his first chosen ones first, and they will meet him in the clouds, in the heaven. And they will go... They will go with Christ in the heavens. That's, they, they take that to be literal, you see. Yeah, I always thought so, too. You're going to see everybody just disappearing or floating up into the sky or however. You know, just, just, yeah, that's how it started for me. I, that was my first question as a, as a youngster. I'm like, okay, how is that going to go down? You know? <laughs> yeah, so it's, it's sad, but, you know, um, and, they, and they teach... Well, you, you imagine if, if a child continues to believe at the age of 20 that Santa Claus actually does physically go physically down chimneys and back up out of chimneys and he brings presents and he comes from the North Pole. You would laugh at such a one. Yeah. And, yet, and yet Santa Claus is the holy claustrum in the cerebrum and it is the fluid that proceeds down the chimney, which is the spinal cord, and brings all those goodies and presents down to the sacrum, the sacred place where we are supposed to be responsible Christians transmuting that beautiful wax, that beautiful seed, and sending it back upward and doing our tithing. So imagine you've got a 20-year-old cousin who still mm. thinks that Santa Claus is, is waiting on the 24th with his camera and all his hidden cameras in his house and, mm. and he's, he's, he's waiting for to, to physically catch Santa Claus so he can put it on YouTube and show the world that he's the first person in history to really physically catch Santa Claus coming down the chimney. I mean, you'd have a laugh at such a one, wouldn't you? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Well, this is what Christians are doing going to church. You know, they're smacked out on Prozac, and they've got Benny Hinn smacked Mm -hmm. out on cocaine with his wife, and Mm -hmm. they're doing somersaults on there saying, giggling their heads off, smacked out on cocaine, telling them that Jesus is going to come and rapture them if they keep putting money in the donation box at the back of the hall. 
Don't mm. forget to put notes in that contribution box. Oh, yeah. oh, yeah. Our pet dog needs a $10,000... You know, remember when Jimmy Swag, uh, Jimmy Stewart was uh, was caught and his wife... What was her name? Um, um, Penny or something like that. Anyway, remember she had all, she had a shitload of makeup on her face. She looked like a... Oh, Tammy Fabek, yeah. yeah. Yeah, Tammy, yeah, whatever. Yeah, anyway... She was crying, and they were caught out, you know, because they were stealing all this money. But their dog had an, a, a ten thousand—I think it might have been even—I don't know. It was, yeah, it was ten thousand um, dollar air-conditioned house. It, it, the dog had like all of these perks and and all sorts of things. I mean, imagine that they go out to their air-conditioned dog house. And they go back and turn on the news and it says, oh, there's two billion of our brothers that are starving to death. Yeah. And, and they're they not happy to go to church and tell their idiots, smacked yeah. out on Prozac, to um, put more money in the contribution box because Jesus is coming to save their asses. Their right. sorry little asses. You almost feel sorry for them, you know? I mean, I sort of do. I mean, because those, those people, like I said, are good, decent people but they just, they're being deceived, and it's sad. Yeah, yeah, well, let's reach out to them, and uh, let's hope that um, that we can steal them from the uh, the paws of the uh, of the devil, because it is devil worship. It's, it is devil worship. When you look at the court system, you'll find that they are real Saturnian evil little creeps. You know, mm-hmm. your magistrates, they, they don't think twice about sending some young boy to prison, you know, because he's got a whole bunch of, say, traffic violations, mm-hmm. or he's been caught with, you know, possession of cannabis, which is a god plant. Right. Um, and they'll put him in jail for six months. That boy will get raped about 400 times. Um, mm-hmm. He will be bashed up. He'll lose all his teeth. He'll get tattooed. He'll get all sorts of diseases. Then they put him back out on the street. Mm-hmm. And those boys, their lives are finished over just because... Mm-hmm. They've got this corporate system which corporatizes their names and those poor idiots go to court thinking that they are those names, not knowing that they have those names and they can use those names as the beneficiary to put the judge in jail rather than you going to jail. We need to turn this around and get all those magistrates and uh, pedophiles in the churches we need to uh, put them in the uh, in the FEMA detention mm-hmm. that they've made, uh, you know, and hopefully they'll sit in there and stew a little bit and repent, and then we might be able to put them back out in society and have a good life where no one is teaching any fictions anymore and everyone is a sovereign on this earth. It's quite possible to achieve that in the next six months, you know. Sounds like a good plan. Yeah, but the, yeah, we we need to we need to address. The fictions. We need to, you know, face up to the Pope and all the cardinals and say, "Listen, you know, you're just a bunch of pedophiles. Would you like mm-hmm. to change your your behaviour, or would you like to just go into this jail that we've got prepared for you and let's uh, progress finally?" Yeah, and we can we can get off of the ship. <laughs> yeah. And um, let's get on with true living. Yeah, people won't have to lose their homes and you know be homeless on the street and. And, they, and then, like you said, they they paid money into this system, you know, but they get nothing in return. But to beg, and uh, you know, beg the system for everything that it, you know, do we have do we have rights? If there is such a thing? No, no, we we do. They're God given. We we do, but in the the world that we interact with, as a citizen on their ship. No, we don't. You do not have any rights. Don't clamour for rights in court. And just because if you go into court saying, "Well, uh, my God-given right is this, that, and everything," yeah. they will laugh at you and they'll put you your ass in jail at the drop of a hat because they know that you are belligerent, mm-hmm. creating a controversy, and you are fraudulent because you also are going into court pretending to own that name and defending that name. You don't. You have that name. So so the moment you go into court saying, yes, I am Mr. Santo Bonacci, Your Honour, and uh, I'm here to um, um, 
object and, and, and not consent and blah, 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 he'll do whatever he wants with you because you don't have the right to do that. You've got the benefit mm-hmm. and the privilege and the service. All the services have been extended out to you. Um, and they did this because they took us out of original jurisdiction, which the constitution, the constitutions of the land give us, and they corporatize our names, which take us into the fictional jurisdiction which they run. So all we need to do, Michael, it's quite easy. All we need to do is enlighten our brothers about this fact and show them who they are. We are spirit divine entities. Sure, we also have bodies, mm-hmm. but we are not the bodies. We have the bodies. The body that I'm carrying around, it's like, for instance, the car that I use when I travel down to the shops, mm-hmm. that's just the car that I get into. It's a vessel that I use. I have the car. I'm not the car. Right. So my spirit, the spirit that is speaking to you today, is enclosed in a body which physically feeds itself on physical food and drinks physical water and and sustains itself, it sleeps, it works. It Mm. does all these physical things on this physical plane. But it Mm. is a spirit. It is a spirit that is talking to you. It's a soul. And it needs this vessel for, I don't know how long I'm going to live. I I might, you know, live 100 years, who knows. But um, it'll it'll, it'll be useful. I I will be able to use this vessel in in the only way that it was designed to be used, and that is as an alchemical laboratory of transmutation. Hmm. See, the law of God is one. Improve your status. Develop yourself. Grow. You see, when Jesus gives two drachmas to one slave and five to another and Mm -hmm. ten to another, he expects when he comes back from his journeying, he expects them to um, to um, grow their talents or their drachmas or their denarius, whatever mm-hmm. money systems you want to use. But um, in the Gospels, the Lord, he says, there's a, Jesus recounts a parable where the Lord of the kingdom gathers his three slaves and he gives different amounts of money to them. And he goes away and he says, I'll be coming back one day, okay? So, you know, you make sure you you do something with that money. But when he comes back, the one that he gave one drachma to said, Oh, Lord, I feared you, for I know that you are a man, uh, you know, that um, you are an exacting Lord and you are demanding and and powerful and I feared you and therefore I hid my money in the ground and I did not um, accrue any interest. And he mm-hmm. said, Well, cursed slave, out. And what you what you have will be taken from you and given to the one who has more. And the second slave did the same. But the third slave, he said, Lord, I put my money in with the banks and uh, I have doubled the money. I have now, instead of five drachmas, I have ten drachmas. And the Lord said, good, faithful and discreet slave, enter into the joy and the bliss of my father's kingdom that was prepared for you from the founding of the earth. because." The one that has more, more will be given to that one. The one who has less, what he has will be taken from him and given to the ones that have more. This is talking about what we do with our oil. How much of our oil do we return to our Father in heaven in the heaved up place called heaven, which is the cerebrum? Uh, Or how much of it do we expend in riotous living? You know, how many sexual encounters do we need with loose women mm-hmm. how many nights do we go to bed stone motherless drunk because we've just drunk a you know yeah. six six bottles of bourbon or something like that um alcohol destroys the fluids in the nervous system stress stress chokes up the tree of life the tree of life as i said before is the vagus nerve which comes from the optic thalamus, from the pineal gland and the pituitary gland. And this nervous system is vagrant. It's not like the other nerves. The vagus nerve is a vagrant nerve. It's a wanderer. Mm -hmm. It feeds the spleen, the stomach. It is also called the pneumogastric nerve. Pneumo meaning breath, the lungs, 
and gastric, meaning the stomach. So mainly it feeds the lungs and the stomach. It's the tree of life. It's the veritable tree of life. And the tree of knowledge of good and evil is the pingala, the, the two nerves that run down the side of the um, the spinal cord called the pingala and the ida. And the spinal cord is the sushumna. So you've got the kundalini and the kundabhasa, you see? Mm-hmm. So when you're stressed out, what happens is it, this this tree of life is constricted and the oil is not flowing and, and the organs are not receiving the beautiful oil, the spleen and the liver and the kidneys uh, and, and all of these organs require you to be relaxed and in a very soft mental framework. If you are stressed and climbing some corporate ladder and you know you, you do 10 hours of work and then you go and have severe drinking with your mates after work and smoking tobacco mm-hmm. and and then you pick up some some sexy little mama at the bar and you take her home and you know you have great sex with her and, and all of that the stress of the work climbing the corporate ladder, keeping your mind focused on material in things, drinking alcohol, which is acidic and burns up the oil. Tobacco also burns up the oil. Sex is the wasting of the oil because it's the same fluid. Mm-hmm. The fluid the fluid that on the top of the spine in the cerebrum is the same as the fluid at the bottom of the spine, the, the sperm. And then that's the seed. Remember the fish, the little fish, the little sperms that swim around. Mm-hmm. So, so a little egg in there. It's a supposedly yeah. And and if we if we save that seed and save the Christ, um, we can transmute it. It can be transmuted. In fact, in tantric sex, that's what they teach. If you have um, sex without the orgasm, you are actually containing that energy, that electrical sexual energy, and you are transmuting it and sending it higher and higher up the spine. You see, sex is a gift from the gods, Mm -hmm. from the creator. And it is a transmuting gift. It's not to be despised and uh, misunderstood. And we're not supposed to have physical orgasms. We're supposed to have spiritual orgasms. If you want to have a physical organ orgasm that's okay because it will produce it will produce offspring physical offspring and you right. pass on your consciousness with that sperm but if you're just going to have a quickie right. uh, um, well you're just wasting that consciousness it's just your brain you, you see this is why have you ever heard the expression um, do you do you use the word f- for sex do you use the word bonking yeah I've heard the expression yeah. yeah, in Australia we have a colloquialism, colloquialism uh, um, bonking. You see, that means mm-hmm. you know that means having a, a bunch of sex. So we also have a, a colloquialism that says um, bonking your brains out. Right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I picked up and says I'm going to bonk your brain. <laughs> well, it, well, he in fact is bonking his own brains out. He is depleting his mental psychic and spiritual energy. He's he's absolutely wasting it. In the Bible, in Genesis, Judah, one of the twelve sons of Israel, he has a son. He has three sons. And they marry the first one, the oldest one, marries a woman. And um he dies. And so the Jewish tradition of inheritance requires that the second son marry that daughter and provide offspring to his first brother because the first brother died without having offspring. So the second brother has to marry this woman, his sister-in-law, and give her offspring. Well, the second one also died, which left the third and last brother, Onan, to provide offspring to the family and the first brother. Well, Onan, he wasted his seed on the ground. The Bible clearly says that in Genesis chapter 30, I think it is. Mm -hmm. And so... Onan was killed by God because he wasted his seed. He did, he did, he did not provide uh, offspring for his uh, sister-in-law. Well, when you go to Japan, someone who man- masturbates is called an onanista. Interesting. 
Yeah, pretty much like a dentist is someone who, dent means tooth, teeth, mm -hmm. and a dentist is someone who practices in, 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 is a doctor of teeth. Right? In Italian, we say dentista. So onan, onanista, in Japan, you know, if you want to call someone a wanker. <laughs> <laughs> I've heard that one too. Say, hey, you, onanista, and he'll, uh, he'll get offended. Mm -hmm. Now, how did that word, how did the word onanista get in the Japanese language? You got to, yeah, it's something to think about, isn't it? It is. <laughs> they, um, they must have got it from the, the Jesuit missionaries that, um, that came calling in Japan there in Nagasaki and uh, Kyushu in the uh, late 1500s which eventually they used to behead and kill because they realized that the Jesuits were just trying to subvert Japan and uh, turn it into a, um, a, um, another one of the Vatican's subsidiary uh, um, corporations, which the Rockefellers achieved in the, um, after the Second World War, after they bombed the place, Nagasaki and uh, Hiroshima. Uh, so finally, the Vatican got in and uh, got its corporations in there via the uh, Ro uh, Rockefeller family, who uh, pretty much run Japan. But, it's like uh, branching out, like a corporation that branches out into the, you know, across the planet. Oh, it is. The spider web, you know. Yep, and the Jesuits are the um, the military arm of the Vatican, and they will kill you at the drop of the hat. They will kill their own mothers. They will slaughter and maim. They will butcher and shed blood anywhere that the Pope or the um, the Superior General of the Jesuits, um, the Black Pope, tells them to do. Mm -hmm. They will, and their oath, their bloody oath, is one of the worst of of its kind in the universe. The Jesuits are the most blood guilty entities. On the planet. Wow. Well, a lot of uh, a lot of what we discussed tonight was just, I mean, fascinating. And um, you, you, you have a website, Santos. Do you not? Uh, it's Universal something, Universal Truth School, I believe. That's it. That's it. Universal Truth School. I chose that carefully um, because um, it's a school. That's all it is. I'm no guru, I'm just a researcher, and it's a school where everybody can contribute and learn, and it's universal truth, it's not local truth, it's not education, it's not institutionalized truth, it's universal truth. It's a yeah. universal truth school where you will learn universal truths that have, that have been remembered and recollected from ancient past times. And they've always, these truths have always been there, it's just that I'm, I'm just... Bringing them, bringing them to the fore. Exactly. There was there was a good book, by the way, too. When I was watching one of your videos, um, I remember you holding it up on your lecture, and it was the, called "The Light of Egypt." I ordered that book, although I haven't really delved into it yet. Um, probably about half of the first chapter. I just recently got it, but um, that's a good one. That's a really good one. My friend, that is the best book I've ever read. Um, well, the Bible is the best book, but I'm talking, you know, I'm talking published mm -hmm. books, uh, you know, from from individuals of recent. But if I were you, I would probably start reading the book. Start on page 171, I think it is, The Science of the Stars. Get into that chapter. Okay. It's page 171 in my version of the book. It's called... Mm -hmm. Science of the Stars. It's it's the second part of the book. Start there. I will do that. That would be a much better and more exciting portion of the book to start reading from. I would definitely like to have you on again, Santos. I know you're a busy man in, 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 uh, in this course of getting the, the knowledge out there, but it would be great to have you back again. And, uh and I hope you can do that sometime. And, and uh, for those out there, I definitely encourage you to go to that website, universaltruthschool.com. Um, I guess we're going to close it out, Santos. Yeah, um, thanks. That, well, I'll, I'll accept that offer now. Anytime you want me back, I'll be back. And um, it'll be my pleasure.
Thank you so much. And I really appreciate you being here and uh, being the guest tonight. I really am. All righty. Thanks, Michael. You're very welcome. Thank you, Santos. Okay. Take care. Bye-bye. Mm-hmm. All right, folks. Uh, Santos Bonacci. Um, I'm really glad that uh, a lot of you were able to be here and uh, join us tonight. Very good information. Uh, ToxicRealityRadio.com Sam Morelli show Saturday night I'll be back next week at uh, 9 p.m. Pacific Standard Time um, and the show after that which is the Saturday following uh, will be in Florida so I probably won't be doing the show that weekend but uh, I look forward to next week and uh, really appreciate you guys thanks for hanging out tonight and uh, it was very interesting very very interesting show and I encourage you to look up Santos and uh, see more of his videos. And with that, I guess I'll close it out. Um, and uh, appreciate everyone again. Thank you. Thanks, Santos.